Welcome everybody to the 2021 EGF High School National Championships in collaboration with Walt Disney World and ESPN Wide World of Sports. My name is Dander Taco and join with me in the booth to take you through yet another day of group stage play for High School Rocket League is Ocean. Ocean, how are you feeling about yet another day coming through on these national championships? Yesterday we saw some pretty interesting action, particularly in the group that I got to. Uh, I got to see some very unique players, some unique personalities. We got to interview as well. And this is what I like about the high school scene. It gives me so much hope for esports in the future, in particular Rocket League. There are so many nice personalities who actually can or do think can push themselves into the higher scene of Rocket League. And I think that's a cool thing about this sort of tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a great chance for exposure and they'll get plenty of it throughout the group stages. We have a fully packed schedule here as we do cover group five within all the five groups. Now, after today, all the teams will be represented in the final bracket. There are four teams per group. Top two will advance onto the bracket this weekend and group five will be kicked off with our first match here. As you can see, it's Lubbock High School and Summit High School. And between these two teams, we had a fair amount of them represented in an all-star game we had in this past weekend. But you actually, Ocean, had mentioned that uh, you were seeing some regional specificity to a lot of these teams and where they tend to originate from. Well, what I am really interested about is Summit High School and VTHS. Vikings are both from New Jersey and Lubbock High School and Richardson High School are both from Texas. So a couple little regional rivalries to keep an eye on later in the day. Absolutely. But we're going to be kicking off this first game. We have the players in the lobby, so we'll be able to kick them off with this first game. Of course, every game in group stage play just so incredibly important. So as we are waiting for them to join the lobby, it's really up to these players to get up on the right foot. If you drop a series, it's really on you to pretty much sweep your way through the rest of the day to keep your hopes alive. So with the players joining the field, we're going to go down to the field for the first match of the final day of group stage play here for group five. We're going to have a nice even kickoff to start things off. And at least for your group stage play yesterday, Ocean, were there any things that you had noticed between the gameplay of the squads on stream where you saw some inconsistencies? I know there are certain teams that really uh, had a cleaner path, but did you find that the matches were fairly even throughout? There was one team in particular that just kind of stood out beyond the rest, and that was a team called Huntington High School. The rest of them were kind of close matched apart from the two that finished bottom, which is Waterton High School. The other two teams were very close and gave us a good game. So there might be some some similarities between some of the teams. Uh, looks like we're gonna have a pretty competitive game to start off with here. And we're getting a lot of ping pong in the midfield, but slowly it will advance into the halves. Macro trying to roll one around, gets a nice bounce into Gaming Burger, who only bounced that down. Rupee to the side, and Clavian keeping the attack alive off the backboard again. Jonesy going to have to tap that slightly to the side, gets dunked instead, and Macro opening the scoring with a fantastic dunk. So, um, looks like a little bit of a lapse of concentration here for Jonesy. Trying to take it up the wall, it just doesn't bounce nicely. But just straight into the path of a Lubbock player. To be fair to them, they realise the chances there to take that goal. And it's a nice start in the first minute, but the game has been quite competitive between both of these teams. And the lapse in concentration you'd mentioned, I mean, it's so crucial at this level of play to make sure that you are completely tight airtight really on defense so that nothing does slip through because the moment you get a little bit of an errant touch that can be capitalized on as we saw so quickly there in gaming burger making sure that trend is being up kept he is challenging these very quickly macro will get another pick out and right now it seems as though summit high school getting a little bit of a struggle to get past midfield it's a good really defensive line that lubbock high school has opened up in their half with that clear it's finally going to go over to the lubbock half and rom's main company can try and mount an attack I love it, Kofi, creating a lot of chances through winning loose balls in midfield. But now they're finally starting to have to defend so much, starting to warm up into this game. Just a tad, and they're getting some good chances here. They're not quite getting the shot under the bar. And so Summit's going to have to retreat for their defensive half one more time as Ramsey and Mekro will exchange a little volley. Rupi to the ceiling and Gamingberg with a great pass down to Clavian. He doesn't make contact, Bromsby does. Jonesy's lurking in the backfield for this one. Gets a 50 with Mekro, will open things up for Rufi. Great shot to the top shelf. It's gonna be off the backboard. Bromsby sends it well wide into the corner. And Summit High School keeps knocking on the door. No answer yet. Still one goal in it right as we're about to cross half time. 
some of it look great when they get into Lubbock's half and they are finding chances, they're playing it off the backboard. That's when they look good, but when it's in midfield and there's a bunch of loose balls, they're struggling. And Jonesy trying to get that one around, doesn't quite have the angle. Bromsby keeping it alive, but ultimately it's going to be a serve up to Gaming Burger, who with the deep clear down is going to have an open opportunity. Tough angle, that shows why. Just getting a little bit too much on it. Going to go across the face of goal, though. Ball still lurking deep in the summit half. Gaming Burger playing a bit patient, and Jonesy takes advantage with a roller out. And we're going to see another clear down. It's really just on Summit to open up a chance. How about that one? Bromsby gets the roller of a pass and tucks into the open net. It was a bit of a miscommunication there. Two Lubbock players getting caught up, both committing, getting in each other's way. And Bromsby was just in the right place at the right time. You could say a little bit lucky, but Summit have improved since that first goal and have been knocking on the door and they finally get their answer. And that answer is, of course, an equalizer. And it's a great job by the Batmobile of Rufi to be able to use that, really, the breadth of the car body to get in the way. Because as you say, it might be a mistake. It might be a little bit of an error. Maybe you don't know the intention even of Rufi, but he got in the way, disrupted the defense, and works to great success. And Summit can certainly enjoy that, but they can't rest on their laurels. Still 1-1, essentially kind of resetting the stakes here. Promise being company going to have to hold the fort down, so to speak, as Rufi will get... Another clear to the side. Mekro, though, opens up with a nice shot. The bar will deny it, but it's still sitting on the line. It's a temporary clear, but Gaming Burger will finally finish it off. I'm so glad for Lubbock that they managed to get back in there and get a goal quickly because I can feel a bit of nervous tension around them. After making that mistake, quite clearly seems to be a communication issue of what happened there for the previous goal that they conceded. They needed to hit back strong, otherwise that nervous energy was just going to build and build and build and build, and it looks like they've been gifted an opportunity of their own. Summit High School coming across, and kickoffs off the restart so important. They're functionally the only set piece within this game, and sometimes you need to execute to perfection. Bromsby getting that ball a little bit late on the bounce, and you're not going to see too many gifted goals within series like this within the national championships, but that's as close as we're going to come. Another goal going in. And we'll have to see if Summit has any heroics up their sleeve in the final minute. The worst thing that could have happened for Summit, you know, you just conceded, you want to do exactly what Lubbock did, get right back into the series, and you make a mistake like that, and now Lubbock, two goals up, about a minute left. Make up three goals up, never mind. And Clayton was a name we saw within the All-Star event within the high school scene over this past weekend here on EGF, and they're showing why. Open opportunity in the air, not only putting it on target, but really getting a lot of power and direction. Three goal lead, and this is game one. It is somewhat of a feeler out game where the both teams have to get used to each other, though. Summit is definitely on the, really getting the brunt of the attack from Lubbock High School. They're not showing a lot of mercy on attack, really drilling the ball on target fairly consistently, and the shooting percentage is showing that. New is shooting 50% here in game one. Yeah. Like, you know, both of these teams seem a little bit hesitant to go towards the ball. I mean, Summit more so than Lubbock because as soon as the game starts to slow down, that's when Lubbock seemed to get onto a loose ball and create something. And that's something that you don't usually see in Rocket League. Usually you can tell when a team's amping up the pace and looking to get a goal or building a play. And that's not the case here. It just seems to be little unfortunate errors and then Lubbock taking advantage. We'll see if anything can be taken for the road on either side. We'll maybe get one more, and we will. Clavian with four seconds left. Going to put in number five, and I think this is a good strategy. I think sometimes you get the win, and you maybe just want to dry out the clock. I actually always like the very aggression, no mercy in this dojo approach of just getting the morale goals, really beat down the other team, make a statement in game number one, and Lubbock certainly making that statement. Every player on their side represented in the stat sheet with a goal. And at least at the end, someone's going to get one more, but doesn't do much to stop the bleeding. Lubbock will take game number one. I will take game number one, but that little consolation goal at the end is actually going to help them a lot, right? Because as you said, they were just throwing in the tile, uh, sorry, throwing in the tile against Summit, you know, putting a lot of shots on, getting a lot of goals. And that can be quite difficult to come up against, right? You know, you feel like you're under a little bit of pressure, and then you start to play reactive, you start to play more slowly, you start to play just a little bit more, you're not comfortable, you're uncomfortable. When you're playing uncomfortably, you're going to start making more mistakes. So it's good that Summit can now reset mentally, we've got to go on the last second, let's go into the next one.
Yeah, and the difficulty of games like this is having a short memory. Really, in esports series in general, is you take a game one loss, but you understand that series are won one game at a time. You have to shake it off and move on. And for the most part, I think Summit was in that game offensively. I don't think this was as one-sided as the scoreline might depict. I think Summit had a lot of chances early on, not quite getting the finishing, but that could be on stream jitters. It's the first day that they're playing group stage play for the national championship. So nerves are expected. It's on them to warm up into the series, get those shots on target. And they're not unrepresented. Seven shots is not a shabby showing from Summit. Just a little bit more accuracy. This could be a completely different game one. And that's might be really the goal here for game number two for Summit. Just making sure that offense is a bit more cohesive. Yeah, I feel like the, the main advantage there for Lubbock was in the midfield, right? They were winning a lot of the loose balls, and they were able to just keep going attack after attack after attack. But I feel like Summit then could change their approach. That I think that's not a difficult problem to solve. Maybe put the ball out to their side instead, and maybe build up slower from the back. And then also when they were on the offense, when they were in the Lubbock half, they looked quite good. And we'll have to see if Summit does get these adjustments that they do need here in game number two as we will be kicking off yet again and Lubbock will be returning to the long ball. They'll find some success though. Junzi and Ruby will combine for the clear though they don't connect and Clavian off the backboard will test Bromsby. They get a good 50. That's actually going to roll all the way down and that's the opener for Summit. Actually Summit, the start of that, we're putting the ball out to the side and finding a lot of comfort. It was working out really, really well for them. They held possession a lot better than they were doing in the first game. And of course, yeah, a fortunate points, but honestly, should have that covered if you're Lubbock. Good start for Summit. Let's see if they can hold on. And uh, somewhat of a fortunate 50, but it's still produced by a good 50-50 challenge. So end of the day, still an earned goal. They all count the same and a good way to start off on the right foot. Now, it's really just a matter of testing their defense out. Lubbock has shown that they're more than willing to test their backboard defense. Not sure if that strategy is going to be as consistent, but now they're trying some cutesy passes. Nice little cheeky touch to the ceiling, though Clavian will not be able to continue. Mekro tries their hand. Rufi taps down. Gaming Burger, tough angle, shows why, and a little bit of a counterattack for Rufi. They'll just send it deep and get some side boost, and Clavian will hit it back. So after this first goal, we've uh, descended a bit into a back and forth long ball situation as both teams try to gather more semblance of possession. They've got the lead right now. They don't need to go and create anything. Yeah, in right now, it seems as though Summit is holding up, but they have to be pretty low on boost as that one is going to be dunked on off the crossbar. And out now for Rufi to clear. Clavian, no contact. Mecro going to have to ramp that one up the sidewall. Rufi will tap it middle, but Gaming Burger is there. Held up in the midfield. Clavian streaking in, gets beat out. Bronsby. As a player up in support, off the backboard. Rufi's up for it and will be met with another backboard touch. Jonesy, it's on target, it's off the bar, it's off the post, and it is in 2-0 to Summit High School. This is a lot better from Summit, isn't it? Right in the last game, they got beat 5-2. They're now 2-0 up, their defending has been brilliant, and they haven't been impatient when playing it out. They've put it to the side and started to build their own attacks. Because every single time in the first game where they just kind of cleared it mindlessly, it was just won back by Lubbock and they could keep going, they could keep attacking. When they put it on to the sign and then start to build something themselves, it puts Lubbock under a lot more pressure. And I love the patience being shown by the offense, being able to follow consistently in. And as I say that though, that is two players. So they certainly are feeling themselves on offense and more than willing to aggress onto a loose ball. They still have half the game to close out and get their first series win here. And Gaming Burger, will try to change the tide here with a clear. However, now double commit from Summit results in a nice 50-50. Bronsby will lob that one high for Clavian to follow. No touch, Mekro will get another clear. Lubbock set up with another touch. Gaming Bird keeps it low. Jonesy gets just enough on it. Summit will survive another clear and send that one back out to midfield, though Clavian tries to hold it up and another giveaway. Rufi with the long clear. That might be in and it is just something around that top right corner. Summit keeps hitting it 3-0 now. Well, could you call this 50-50? Yeah, I think I'm gonna call this 50-50 myself. You know, maybe you could argue Lubbock should have a player back there and should be on the right out. 
of their offense and rotating back, but honestly, I I'm not too worried. They're winning these 50 50s and they're making sure they get shots on goal. Well, there's another one right there. No one from Lubbock can be seen. And Summit, this has been such a game, too, for me. Yeah, this is not only a response, but they're capitalizing on the momentum. This is such a snowball effect. They're getting goal after goal after goal. And it, I like how the quality almost increases as we go on. The first goal is really just an errant contact with the ball. It just rolls downfield into an open net. But then after that, it's a consistent passing. It's quality rotation into offense. And they're earning all their goals down the stretch. Certainly a well-deserved comeback. And as you said, a great response from game one where they looked a little behind. Now they are the ones driving the narrative of this game and now we're even looking to Lubbock to really have an answer they've looked a, a bit more neutered here only two shots within game number two yeah 90 seconds remaining so yeah something to put on the board but at this point it might be looking more in the realm of consolation rather than a uh, honest comeback attempt I mean honestly I think the best thing for Lubbock to do right now is, is chill and try and find a new answer because obviously in the first game you're winning all the midfield duels now there's no midfield duels to be won right it's going out to the side and your opponents are building off of that they've just got to think of an answer in the rest of this game to then come back into the next matchup and try and get back in the lead of this series because i think this one's done fantastic yeah, at this point, they're at least circling the goal, though they are not finding that final touch needed. Mekro will try once more to play it in the corner, though Clavian will have to keep it alive with another hit. Rupi to the side, Gaming Burger. Another tap forward. And Mekro just trying to keep the ball in this orange hat. Orange is not willing to give them another shot. That one opens up, and somehow on the rebound, Clavian reads that one. I didn't think there was anything to be had, but at least one is coming back for here for Lubbock. Yeah, and sometimes you have to be careful when you're playing off the wall. Like, you know, I have suggested that style change for them, and they have been adopted, but you have to be careful. You have to be aware of where your opponents are. Another little lapse of concentration, another little mistake. Thankfully for Summit, probably not going to mean much. They're 4-1 up. You've got to score three goals in 33 seconds if you are Lubbock. It's probably not going to happen. We'll have to see if uh, really this game can uh, maybe not be more interesting for Lubbock uh, in terms of a comeback, but being able to get those consolation goals. But I think uh, your point about being able to just to, as a proof of concept, show that you're in this game, be able to uh, get the consistent offense, get some shots. And honestly, if you're drilling a goal with shots and, and they're not going in, it's still at least uh, someone encouraging for your chances down the stretch, showing that you're not completely out of this game. And I don't think either team really reaching that state, though, Summit still taking the lead here, or rather taking the lead in that game and being able to tie up this series. So huge momentum swing. Game three it will be very interesting to see which team can come out ahead. You know, just take back, slow things down, think about what's happened in this series so far, because it's been a very interesting one for me to witness. I'm sure everyone else is enjoying it at home. Right, so Lubbock came out absolutely brilliantly in the first game of this series, right? 5-2 win, wasn't it? They were scoring goals. They were relentless. They were winning all of the midfield balls, all of the midfield duels. It was working out really well for them. Summit, they get a consolation goal at the end of that. They come back. Okay. How do we solve not winning the midfield duels? Well, we don't. We make it so there aren't any midfield duels. Let's put it out to the side and start building instead of just clearing the ball mindlessly. And that's a lot better from Summit. They win that next game 4-1. And now it's up to Lubbock now to come up with an answer to what Summit is doing. Otherwise, they might fall behind in this series that they were once in front of. Yeah, and Summit actually is, in a way, continuation. I mean, I when I'm describing the series, I'm tempted to paint it in a way of just a wild swing to the other side that Summit was really beat down in Game 2. They came back, but really they had shots. Just this time, they capitalized on it. And the note about possession is so important. If you're, all your clears are just going to the other team and you don't really have that uh, next touch to be able to add on to your play, it can be just so difficult. So at the start of Game number 3, both teams are going to have to focus on that. And right now, Lubbock is going to leap out to an early lead. Much better. And you, you actually see Lubbock probably made an adaptation there. I mean, you can you can argue that they would have been on the side there anyway. But it seems it now, instead of having like a loose player in the midfield, they're on the sides waiting behind for an opportunity to put the ball back in. That's exactly what works in the first opening 10 seconds for them. Good response from Lubbock High School. So with a bit of open space, Ruby can try and make a difference here. Gaming Burger reads that like a book. 
and will try to extend things with an air dribble of their own. Nope, get that final touch. So Mekro, slight tap in the middle, gets a good 50, almost gets a second right after. Fortunately, will be cleared out. Ruby will attempt to clear, actually gonna go backwards toward their own goal. Jones is gonna have to play this one a bit careful, go up the line and look for an advance up, but they're not finding it. Summon High School just trying to escape their half right now as Lubbock playing a decent amount of midfield defense here. Gets away from a little bit here, but Macro there to carefully tap that one away. But going back to a little bit of long ball, we'll wait for a bit more careful advance to come out from either one of these teams. But one goal in it, at least so far, since that really rapid kind of erratic opener, we've seen a bit more of a KG uh, game start to emerge here as we start to blend a little bit more into the mid game. Yeah, I feel like both these teams now have a game plan and went, and it's now, you know, probably better quality Rocket League. I mean, we wish it was just that relentless aggression that we saw before. But I actually like this more, where both teams are kind of playing against each other's strengths and weaknesses. Summit, again, playing it to the side, building up an attack and getting in a goal for themselves. That's a lot better from them. We're tied up not only in the series, but in this game three. And near post player getting a little too close to that play and good awareness by Summit to be able to lift it over to the back post. And of course, great job to crash in on the goal. Bronsby doing the crashing of their own on that aerial, not able to get that. Good back pass into Rufi. They'll send that deep to the far post. Gonna be a bit wide. So Clavian will have a chance to advance out. Jumps at it prematurely, no contact. Pass to Bronsby doesn't make any touch. Mekro will send that one back on down. Jonesy with a temporary touch. And Mekro will do a great half look to keep this one alive. They potentially have a pass. Jonesy taps it for him. Gaming Burger, it's on target, but Rufu with a backflip save. Glavian will tap that one into the corner again. Gaming Burger with the boost steal. They're trying more interesting tactics with this boost management, but unfortunately not gonna work out. And another clear goes down. A good attempt there from Lubbock, but ultimately Summit defense will hold for now on the immediate follow though jones calling the action and they get two great saves another clear goes out to mid what a save that is because you're not going to know where they're going to try and put that shot that is terrific but i think it was jonesy to make that save absolutely brilliant good job especially right as we reach half time jonesy will get yet another clear this one gonna roll all the way down they'll have the mid boost and bromsey up on the sidewall to get a pass they do get that, but Ruby decides against it, will retreat back to their own half. So a little bit more cautious. They're not really just throwing bodies forward for the sake of it, as Jonesy will at least send another one up. That's a great roll. Gaming Burr is up for it, and they were needed. Bromsby was following foot behind. Jonesy sends another deep one down. Might be able to get their own ball, but the flip, unfortunately, will take it on to a back pass. But I love this uh, careful little touches to the teammates. Good passing play from Summit. Will they get rewarded for it? The immediate touch afterwards will be turned away, and Rufi trying to roll that one across the back line yet again, but with a deflection! I have no idea how that angle works, but Summit will take it regardless. They'll take the lead. I don't know if you could tell by the pure shock in my voice there, but I did not think that was really good when I saw that deflection. A little bit of luck for Summer High School, but I think it's deserved. For the last minute or so, they've been creating a lot of passing plays, creating a lot of chances, and they've been playing well. They've been playing Pretty good strategic game against this Lubbock team, and it's all deserved this late that they have. Fortunately, Clavian just not getting the touch that they want, so that one will go unanswered. Lubbock High School with under 90 seconds now to try to get a response. The players rotating back for boost. They're now slowly moving up. However, Clavian with a miss opens things up for Jonesy. They'll take that high across the backboard. A bump for the player on the backboard. Bromsey can't finish that one off. And now with a miss in midfield, Mekro on the counter will try an early flick. Jonesy there for the save. Gamingberger trying to lock things down will go to the sideline. Getting bumped out of the way. Bromsby doesn't get the touch. Rufi set up for a shot. Mekro and Clavian have a couple deflections, but will be cleared down. So Lubbock High School just trying to get one more shot and a chance opens up for Clavian. And he will not miss. We're all tied up. I'm trying to see what exactly went wrong there. It was, it was completely in, in, right in the midfield. It just didn't quite go right, and no one else was really expecting that outcome. Free shot for Lubbock. And again, a little bit fortunate, but you could say they deserved a little bit of luck because of how they conceded the, the, the last goal. And now Lubbock needs to ride this momentum for the last 50 seconds or so to try and take this game free because right now, if you ask me who the better team is, it's probably something. 
and some of it is it, it definitely being, I would say, more methodical within their approaches, and I think it works to great success. The problem is that Lubbock keeps finding these tiny gaps in the defense, and they're able to take advantage of them. We'll have to see if they can pull something out before the end of regulation. Only 15 seconds for Summit to last to be able to get to that added time. And with a couple touches in the corner, they will be able to roll it out, but Gaming Burger is there. Rufi, no touch. 50 from Gaming Burger will be lost, and Jonesy will tap this one up the line. One more chance to throw it downfield. Rufi, what a redirect! It's on target, but it doesn't have the distance. A great save, and we're going to be seeing added time for the first time this series. This is truly a great series and a great start to the night. What a redirect that was, but the save is critical. It keeps Lubbock tied up in this series for nine. Gaming Burger with the first uh, real chance here will ramp it off the ceiling. Rupi needs a touch. They don't get it. Bromsby will get the clear instead. Mekro to the sideline. Bromsby might have the ability to hit this one forward and does. Clavian only gets this touched high. Jonesy's up for it. It's the back post. Gaming Burger and Mekro both committing. They will get that clear. Now all the players really spaced out throughout this field as they're desperately just trying to get some boost. Make sure the structure is maintained. Gaming Burger will somewhat panically hit this one. A great pass to Rufi. Top shelf. It's off the bar. Rob's on the follow. Double save from Clavy, and it's going to go to the blue corner. Rufi will tap another one forward. Though right now, the Lubbock defense is admirable right now. They are turning away Summit's chances. They might get reward on an offense, but Rufi, temporary save. will tap that one to the side. And Mekro and Gaming Burger trying again, but another denial, and that will roll to the far side thoughtful that we're going to convert one of those chances. Great series from the Lubbock fence, but here comes Summit yet again. It's a nice little roll there. Jonesy's going to tap another one down, but unfortunately just to give away Clavian, they're going to knock that one deep. It's going to get over the defender, but pass the goal. Pass off the sidewall. We've seen that work to great effect for Lubbock before, but that shot only going to the corner. Bromsby on the counter. Dribbles past one, but not another. And we're starting to see the midfield defense tighten up just a little bit, but you can see, almost feel the anxiety from both of these teams. Just stretching for all these saves. The air dribble getting past a couple, but yet again, they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. Almost two minutes played here in this overtime. And we're no closer to finding that winner. Be nervous too, this is a national championship series. Tied up one for one in overtime. The pressure on these front of the young players could not be more relentless. So Gaming Burger will try to slow things down just to get a little bit of sense of order, I might feel. Though they will get dunked. Rupi on the follow doesn't get that tap and instead we'll see Gaming Burger advance forward. Almost beats the last defender. Jonesy stands tall, gets a good 50. We'll be able to potentially advance down though Clavian testing Bromsey one more time. The back pass to Gaming Burger. Rolling across Mekro. Waiting in the backfield. Now they're up for this one. Jonesy beats him to it. Much needed there as they will now advance the ball down the field. But that actually opens up a large gap in the backfield. Jonesy's going to have to get back on this one. They're only able to tap that one off the backboard. Bronsby and Rufi will be able to slow things down temporarily. Though Mekro will send yet another shot to the back post. And will yield another save. And right now it's so tough to tear these teams apart. Both of them seem like they hang on for dear life on some of these attacks. But right now as we're settling, we're seeing a little bit of calm. But as I say that, Jonesy with the shot from the zero angle. Let's this again to see how this goes in. It's a brilliant shot from Jonesy. That's all I can say. There, there's no luck in ball. It's just a terrific rocket league shot. Some of the high school take the lead in this series. I that's a very close encounter. I would say that personally for me, I thought some high school were the better of the two teams in that third game, right? I, th I don't think uh, too many people would be against that opinion. But Lubbock, when it mattered defensively, they were making some great saves, getting the ball out to the side as well. And they are a team, Lubbock, who like to get forwards by the looks of things. They like to just keep attacking and attacking and attacking. Will it work out for the rest of the series? I'm not sure, but I'm so sure against another team that this Lubbock team will get great results. And not just like wait a series, but absolutely demolish them just because of their play style. But some at high school, since game one, as soon as, as soon as they adapted to how Lubbock High School liked to play, they've been terrific.
And this is the first match we've actually seen within this series that has been decided by a single goal, not not to mention just the overtime, but the other games have been separated by three two goal margins. And we're starting to see that get a little bit tighter. And it's just about the execution. I think Lubbock was the team that was pressed under a bit more from the really the improved offense of Summit. However, Lubbock, I think they lack that fine edge. A couple touches off the backboard. They were keeping the ball in the Summit half, but I don't know how much it was making the Summit defense sweat. I'd like to see a little bit better quality of touches, and I think they're right back in this, but it did come down to the wire. We had to go nearly three minutes of added time to find that winner in game number three. So game number four must win for Lubbock High School. We'll see if they can keep their series alive here in the first match of the day here of the group stage play here for the national championships. At the last game in this series, Dave just come down to a little piece of quality from Jones. He lost it, sure. But if Lubbock want to get back into this series, they do need a little bit of luck as well as skill. And that's a very bit of, uh, that's a very good bit of might of love for them right into the series, 12 seconds. But if you remember, in the last game, game three, they also had a goal in the first 15 seconds. So can Lubbock hold their lead this time? Well, to see now it's uh, really on Summit to held their lead, but this time it's going to be Lubbock and it doesn't last long. The pass straight down to the near post and Summit High School just a bit quicker. Yeah, that, that's one way to respond, right? I was asking him, <laughs> could Lubbock hold on? I mean, the answer is no, but Every single time the ball was on the, the side walls here for Summit High School, they look so much more comfortable. And off this kickoff, they're again just piling on the pressure. Every single time they have the ball, they're trying to build up a play. This is so good from Summit. You love to see it. And you're starting to see a little bit of interchange here. That's actually wide up a shot for Jonesy. They rush it a bit, and the bounce shot's going to rattle wide. Bronsby gets a little bit of a run up, only a tap to the sideline, so Clavian. Advancing it down slowly, gets a good 50. Mecro advances it further off the backboard. No touch by Clavian. Gaming Burger, good contact over the bar. Just tap that one to the corner and steal some boost. So Jonesy will advance down with uh, limited boost help from their teammates. Rupee, no touch, and Gaming Burger, another 50 coming out. So first minute has come and gone. Two quick goals, but it still feels like the game is wide open. Another long shot almost catches the defense sleeping. Though they won't get punished. Mecro one more in, but Rupi gets a nice save here. So the speed definitely picked up and the long ball, even though we were somewhat shaming these teams earlier, it is working to great effect. It's keeping the defenses, it seems, on their toes. You know, for both teams, and I feel like Putting up long in, in Rocket League is, is always going to be valid because players can get a little bit uncomfortable and can make mistakes. But I do like it when Summit play it out to the side and just start building an attack like they did just there. 2-1 so Summit. Rufi in earlier matches had a redirect almost from the same position to steal it before regulation, but they didn't get it to go. This time the redirect will find the back of the net for the lead for Summit. And great efficiency here, shooting about 66% here. And Lubbock High School now in the situation where they're gonna have to fight from behind, unfortunately, after getting such a quick goal to start things off with. Summit High School just a little bit sharper around the edges here as Bromsby almost misses that aerial, will get the touch in. Macro and Clavian, two are needed to clear that one out as Rupi will tap into the middle, but ultimately a little bit of a giving way. And with that, Gaming Burger takes the space and another long ball of the open net. We're all tied up yet again, Ocean. What was that? That was a loose ball in the midfield again. That's what Lubbock are great at. They always seem to win those shows. They always seem to be the first ones there, and they always know what to do with those loose balls in the midfield. That time, the option was just go straight for goal, and it worked out well. Why, the rotation is so important when you're trying to get back on defense. You want to make sure that you split the difference really between going too far back to be safe and being up too far and being too aggressive. Right there, it seemed as though the rotation a bit too deep, caught in no man's land and chipped right over. We have to feel a little bit for Summit High School, but not too much. They're not out of this game. It's only tied 2-2. We've seen a fair amount of lead exchanges so far. Definitely, uh, I would say, the most erratic game we've seen so far in the series. We'll have to see if we'll be headed for another overtime to tear these two teams apart, or it's really just going to be a shooting gallery, really, who's going to be putting in uh, the most shots, and eventually some will fall. At least it seems to be the latter, as the 
Lubbock team is advancing fairly well, though. Still waiting for that final pass. Macro going for it, but Jonesy will serve it up. Gaming Burger is there, and Gaming Burger will convert. There's the lead back for Lubbock. What I want to see Lubbock do now is just ride this momentum. I think it would be fair to say that Lubbock are the more aggressive team. They're a lot more comfortable when they're attacking. Yes, they can make great individual plays when they are defending and make some great saves, but they are a lot more comfortable attacking. And when you have momentum as a very aggressive side, you want to keep riding that momentum. I want to see Lubbock punch in a couple more goals here. Otherwise, Summit, you know, they'll just wait this game out, wait for their opportunity, and they'll just find a goal themselves. Mecco with a little roller out, and he's going to save for now, but will get dunked back in the corner. Ruby will get a temporary tap. Clavian flicking it into the middle. Jonesy sends it right back down. Bromsey will turn in place. They have a chance to maybe flick it middle, though not the contact they might have been hoping for. Will remain in this blue half, but Mecco with a fantastic touch will roll it down. Good bit of time ticking off the clock there as uh, really at a point we're approaching quickly where Lubbock has the option to consider either trying to add to the lead, keep the offense up, or just really work on time management, take the one goal lead and really play for that next win. And now I don't think that's the idea, especially when you're a team that can sell it. You know, going forward and getting goals. I would like Lubbock just to keep going forward. I don't want them to try and play for this one goal lead. I don't think it would really be a style that suits them. It appears that they're going to take your advice. They will be able to keep tapping it forward, though. The retreat back to see temporarily get boost. Another tap from Mecro will be fairly easily turned away from Jonesy, though. That dunk opening up things again. Rufy, longer cleared down. 45 seconds remaining to summon up something else up their sleeve to be able to convert. Bromsby is trying to keep it going, but the passing has gone a bit away here from Summit. They're really just trying to throw the ball forward and hope for the best. Bromsby from a tough angle, force a save out of Macro. Jonesy's there, though don't make contact. Gaming Burger will be able to roll that one down. But a great challenge from Rufy actually starts a counter here. Do they have a flick? They do! A lot of power and a lot of accuracy as well. 3-3 three, three now. Wow. I said that they couldn't sit back because the reason is in the two minutes since they scored their previous goal, right? There was always gonna be a chance that they just built that one attack, Summit. They just built that one attack, that one piece of quality. This time that one piece of quality comes from Rufy. It's a brilliant goal. Now with 15 seconds remaining, we might be seeing yet another overtime. The Lubbock might have something else to say about that. Clavian up quickly, they will get a 50. Mecro takes the corner. Five seconds remaining, and Summit just trying to clear their lines. Make sure that they can get this game to OT. One more lop up, Bronsby. That's a long ball. It's off the backboard. Rufy going for a crazy angle. They will not find it. Overtime for the second game straight. This overtime goes past a minute and 30 seconds or so. You could probably theorize that Summit will be a little more comfortable. If Lubbock could get forward quickly and get some chances, maybe put it on the opponent opposing backboard, then I think Lubbock have a great chance of taking this overtime and taking us to a game five. Ramsey will get it clear for now. Gaming Burger keeps it in the orange half temporarily. Clavian another tap forward. Ramsby to Mecro. I lob up, Gaming Burger, quick to it. Shot on target, Jonesy gets just enough of a deflection. Clavian back across, that's on target, it's under the bar, it's bouncing down, and it's in Lubbock High School, forced into game number five. It was under 90 seconds or so, and they continued to find shots, continue to put balls against the backboard. Lubbock High School were going to send us to a game five. It's only time for a little bit of a recap of this series. This has been insane at Rocket League. Actually, game one, Lubbock High School, they come out the docks absolutely flying. A 5-2 victory. Game number two, a lot slower paced. Brilliant adaptations from Summit. They win that 4-1. They start building up attacks off the side. And why that is so effective for Summit is the midfield duels that were being won by Lubbock were extremely oppressive and allowed them to play a lot more aggressive. If you put that ball out to the side, they can't keep attacking like that. They have to rotate. They have to be a little bit more defensive. Otherwise, they're going to get caught out and you can maybe build your own attack. And that is why Summit were able to bring it back game two and three. They were terrific. But Lubbock High School, we actually saw the benefits of their aggressive style in game four. They kept pounding and pounding and pounding at the Summit High School team. 
eventually they made a couple of mistakes, a 4-3 win, and now we're in game five. Yeah, and it, it really is interesting to see as both these teams adjust to each other where one team finds a strategy that works, then the next game, the other team hard counters, and then it's just knockout, drag out, fright all the way to the end, going to overtime, they have to go to extra time, and one team will finally get back. But this is a good showing from Lubbock. I want to see them continue on forward and see if they can get that magic back because the offense was struggling. Even in that overtime match, they had some shots, but they weren't the most convincing. Summit looked the better team in game in game number three. Game four was different, ended a little bit differently. So game number five, all coming down to this. Who can take this first match of group play and set them up well to be able to be one of those two teams from this group? It will advance on to our grand finals bracket. Just have to wait and see as Flavian and Macro trying to start us off here with some early offense, though. Ultimately, just going to go to Gaming Burger and Macro and company are just going to have to keep throwing this one in the orange corner, but Bromsey will turn it away. Starting off strong for Lubbock. They're getting it on the opposing backwards. They're keeping it in the midfield. I would like to see a little bit more coolness from someone. They need to get the ball out to the side and stop these attacks in their tracks. Jonesy will slap that one off the backboard. Brom speed, tight angle, but will force a save out. Another tap for Jonesy with a 50. All three of the players for Summit were right inside that 18 yard box really forcing a lot of pressure under the defense. Gaming Burger trying to do the same with an air dribble. Macro will follow up. Great pass off the backboard. Clavian is there, but they're not able to get the touch. Oh, it's going to be another clear down for Rufi on the counter. Can they get a pass off? They do. Jonesy's there. That's an early tuck in for Summit. Well, it's on the right hand side. It's brought in brilliantly. It's good finish by Jonesy. The quality was there. The quality of flat pass in. The quality of, well, Jonesy just to be in that position, I would say the quality of the finish, but realistically it was a tap in. But both of these teams have a very unique identity, and I want to see that continue throughout not just this match, but the rest of the group stage games. And we'll have to see if it, really that identity can emerge and they can really tap into the strengths that both sides show. It seems as though some is very good at finding each other. They're very aware of each other, and the game sense that they're displaying is very admirable. So paying some dividends again in game number five. Went a little bit into a lull, but at least for right now, Rupi is still showing it off. They got a goal last time. Almost got a second one there. Bromsby looking for a pass potentially to Rupi. Don't touch it. And Mekro sent back into the corner. Gaming Burger up quickly. It's near goal. Rupi takes no chances. We'll send it to the far side. And another roller up for Bromsby to follow. This is great. One, two passing in a way from a lot of these players. Getting some nice taps. It's actually opening up an open chance. It's a deflection in front of the net, but ultimately a roller out into midfield and some nice goal. Gonna have to slow it down just a tad and it's gonna work fantastically for them. Rufi, a great lift over the defense. Yeah, that, that was absolutely dirty. That was just mean from Rufi. Dink over one, dink yep. over two. Very nice goal from Rufi. Every single time the game's starting to slow down and that does favor Summit, it seems to be Rufi with that piece of quality that Summit needs to keep themselves in momentum and keep themselves in control of this match. It's working to great success and it might even get even worse for them here on Lubbock. That one will be turned away. Gaming Burger will just get a longer clear. All of Lubbock sat back on defense, waiting for the next opportunity. Clavian with a tap forward with a good deflection. Macro's up forward, but Bromsby, great awareness to get to that ball in time to the sideline. And I definitely think that is an identity from Summit that they do play a lot of possession. They do look for each other and a slower play definitely does seem to favor them. At least right now, Lubbock isn't playing as quickly or at least not getting on these balls as well as they were in previous matches. I think when they're playing that more frantic, fast paced style, it does really work to Lubbock's advantage though. That's not the case here. And they only have two minutes to adapt to this new game five strategy that Summit seems to have returned to. No, I just need to slow the game right down. It's not more in Lubbock's case when they're in the lead. I want them to keep going forwards and make sure they put their opponents under pressure. I want Summit now to slow the game down because when the game is slow, it suits them tremendously. We'll see if they have anything else in them. And they're given space to pass. They will to Jonesy just to tap into the corner will be the only end result there. Rufi, fantastic pass in the middle. Jonesy though, not able to get up quick enough. Clavian will tap that one to the side. Another giveaway though, Rufi will clear it down middle. 
Gaming Bird with a tap down, attempting for possession. Ultimately, just another tap into the corner again. Flavian with a ramp up, cast one. They're right back down. They might have a flick, though it will only roll to the far post. Gaming Burger and Mecro just trying to get across to it, but ultimately it's going to be another clear there for Summit. So many seconds being ticked off the clock with these longer clears. And they got 60 seconds now to pull two out of the hat. Yeah, like style, you could say this is definitely possible. Here's one of those chances. Not, I think, again, not quite what you want. You want to get that ball into the danger area quickly, but it's just not quite happening right, right now for Lubbock, is it? It, it really isn't. They're struggling to just get these quality touches. This one might be an opportunity for Mecro from a tough angle as that one's going to roll across. So we'll see a Jonesy just get a nice pinch clear, and that's a fantastic way to relieve pressure, especially when it seems as though they are starting to speed up here on Lubbock. A roller down the line. Clavian trying to wrap around this one as the Fortex Summit will actually lose the player temporarily, which is not the situation you want to be, but they only have 15 seconds to hold on here as we'll see a little bit of bump in the midfield. Mecro, turn around for the roller right to Jonesy, and that might be able to burn off all the time needed. They went through some adversity, but ultimately it's Summit by a margin of two goals. It's gonna take game number five, and ultimately this first series. The great series that was, and actually, you know, at the end though, it was about 30 seconds left when they lost their player. For the two players left, Rufy and Jonesy, just to keep their cool, that's impressive, right? You know, these, these are very young players. And for them to be able to keep their cool when something like that happens and just make sure that they waste all of Lippick's time, that's very, very impressive. Yeah, and it shows a lot of adversity. It's it's really the aspect of esports that we take for granted is, of course, you have to show up and perform, but the mental aspect of knowing that every game can be decided by a few plays and being able to struggle in certain games and then just immediately shake it off, come back the next match and perform very admirable. Great job by Summit to be able to not only win game two, but they looked in control of that game for a huge span of time. If not really for Gaming Burger just constantly throwing the ball forward, the shots would reflect that as well. Five shots from him for Lubbock, really, uh, with five sixths of all the shots. It showed Lubbock was still in the match, but for the most part, it felt like Summit was in control. That slower play really suited them. I'm curious to see if other teams will be watching this, maybe looking back at the tape and taking that into consideration. But that is at least our first match down here. Uh, we will be uh, seeing Summit advance the win. Lubbock will have to win out the next two games to be able to come back here in the group stage. Because again, top two do finish. But a good start to group stage. We're going to throw you guys to a brief break. We'll be back in a little bit with some more 2021 EGF High School National Championships.
everybody to some more 2021 egf high school national championships we had just witnessed summit high school taking down lubbock high school we are here to pick the brain of one of the summit players we have a bronzeby on the line bronzeby how are you feeling after that one uh that was a great series and good that we won it of course and hopefully we win some more and we go win the whole tournament maybe no it was a really i mean nice that game. is that is the ideal <laughs> we'd like to we'd like to see that from you and best of luck with that <laughs> there are a lot of good teams. And th that other team, that was a very close, every single game was very close, which is always what you love to see. Yeah, certainly so. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to pick your brain about what was the mindset going into that? Because we had seen right off the bat, very large leads open up for both teams in games one and two. Where it, Was there a bit of a settling down period for you guys as you were playing through? Game one, we went down, I think, two to one or so. And then we started having to play aggressive because there was like a minute left. And then we let up a few goals and we were like, okay, we just need to reset, go on to game two. And then in game two, we started off with a couple of lucky goals. You know, there were lucky goals on both sides. Uh, that one pinch that just went straight into the net, that was funny. Um, but then we just kind of got our confidence. On offense in particular, we were clicking more than usual. Our rotations were very smooth. We had, we always had somebody on the ball at all times. It was very smooth. We get, once we got into that rhythm, we did a lot better. Uh, I'll quickly ask you a couple of questions about not not just your team, but th that match in general, right? So game three and four, very, very tight games. You know, the, the second one, uh, game four, or sorry, game, game four and five, I'm trying to talk about. Game five, a lot more controlled, right? You know, 2-0. Coming from game four to game five, when they tied up the series uh, in overtime in game four, how did you raise that for game five? Because that was decisive and it was a really good controlled performance. Yeah, I think we start in game four. We probably played a bit too aggressive when we had a lead already. And the one thing we definitely excelled with was like transitioning between offense and defense. We often caught them off guard and scored quick goals. We didn't often score just like with long possessions. So we tried to just play a bit more conservatively and wait for them to overextend a bit so we could get a goal when they weren't exactly ready to defend. So that helped us not only on defense, but also on offense. Very yeah, nice. It, no, sorry. I want to ask one more fine. question I mean, I just, I just want to always jump right in on that because uh, we, were, we were both very complimentary of the way you guys were slowing the ball down and you often see uh, teams get a little bit erratic. They'll hit the ball forward and they're just trying to chase it down. Whereas you guys really took some time to find each other. I even saw several back passes to keep possession. Is that something you guys really work on within your training or within your scrims and it's working to great effect, but uh, how much do you guys work with that? Or is that just pure chemistry? You guys play with each other, your friends, like uh, what, what, what are the elements that go into that style of play? That was definitely the thing we worked on the most over the time we practiced. You know, we are all, already pretty good on our own like mechanically and stuff we never really passed when we first started playing was just getting those passing plays consistently being able to find our teammates and give them a good pass that that's what separates uh a lot of like even teams i think that was something we definitely worked on a lot 
to hear. And now I've, I've got to go finally for this question. It's for your team's personal goals throughout the tournament. I know you said you want to go and win it all, and there are some great teams. But after that very, very strong performance in a very tight game where you're able to edge out your opponents, what's the confidence like going into the rest of the tournament? Um, we're definitely confident that we can make a good run at it. We know we are just as good as any other team here and that if we play well, uh, we're really focused up and working together well, we get that good mentality going, then we can win against any team and we're going to try to win it anything we can. So. Um, well, thank you so much for uh, sitting down with us and we'll let you get back and refocus because I know you got more games on tonight and we'll be covering them here on the desk. But anyone you want to shout out before we let you go uh, after that last series? Uh, I guess shout out to my teammates, Kirill, Mark, Alex. Uh, great showing today. And thank you to our coach, uh, Mr. Morano, uh, for helping us improve. And that's about it. All right. Thanks so much, Browns. And best of luck going forward. All right. Thank you. And with that said, we are going to throw you guys to a brief intermission. We're going to ready up the next match on the day, but do not go anywhere. More of the 2021 EGF High School National Championships after this. After that brief intermission, we are back with more of the 2021 EGF High School National Championships, again, in a collaboration with Walt Disney World and ESPN's Wide World of Sports. I'm still Dana Taco, and with me is Ocean. We're both somewhat catching our breath. We had to hydrate because that last series went the distance. Fantastically close series. Summit taking the win, but now the team that they beat, Lubbock High School, has to move on in the group stages, and they're going to be our second match of the day, this time facing off against Vernon Township High School. And what are your thoughts about Lubbock really coming into this next match? Keep their aggressive style. I hope they just keep pounding shots at the goal. I think the only thing they really needed to be closer to Summit in terms of skill is a, a little bit of extra quality, right? Some of those shots realistically should have went in 
should have been further away from the defenders that were there. I don't like to use the term goalkeeper in Rocket League because of the consistent rotations you would be making at the back. But yeah, I feel like extra bit of quality to their offensive play would be nice. And we'll have to see if those adjustments do come in because I agree that their offense at times was really something to behold. They were getting a lot of pressure in early games. They were getting quite a lot of goals, though. Faltered a little bit, but that's what this game is all about. It's adjustment, not only between games, but now we have to see in between series. The players are in, they're ready to go, and Lubbock is looking for a return to form here. Get a win on the board and make sure that they are one of those top two teams who advance on from groups. We're gonna see this game one start off with a little bit of an interesting kickoff. Mekro almost tucking one in for Lubbock, but not gonna go, no. They're gonna get an answer right back, though. Gaming Burger able to hop on that one. I was I would be a little bit nervous for Lubbock after coming off a, a game five loss, coming straight into the next series, and then also knowing they have to play the next game after. But it doesn't seem to have been. And they come straight back in, go in the first seven seconds. Really nice to see from Lubbock. See, Macro starting off with another pass in the middle, though. No one there. A little bit of an air and touch, though. Hyper set up for a shot. They missed the first, but double tap the follow. What an interesting way to get that equalizer. Yeah, I'm just saying that they did the double touch for the clip, but no, no, yeah, they were aiming for the goal the first time, buddy. And this is a very electric start to their series, right? Looks like this is going to be a lot different to Summit versus Lubbock, where it was two very different styles. Both of these teams look like they just want to go straight at it. And I'm ready for it, and apparently so is Hyper. They're just going to send another one deep down, but not able to get the follow-up. Crudex, a great contact on target. Not quite, though. It's going to go off the post. Macro and company will have to send that one deep down again. They'll be able to get a mid boost, but not the 50. Another roller for Hyper to chase. They get a good deflection. It's right to Crudex. They're tucking it in the back post. A great backflip save from Macro. We're going to keep on playing 1 1 after an incredibly fast paced opening minute. I'm actually really up for this, right? I love some of defensive slow play style but i love this even more two teams all they want to do is score goals and win games and you can really see just not just you know how they're playing and what play style they are but you can see the personality of these players through the screen right now they just want to go and win let's see if gaming burger is going to show up yet again on an aerial they are they're automatic so far and they're two for two and that's the lead right back for lubbock Nine. Right. Before I said, you know, maybe I like them playing a little bit more aggressive, like scoring more goals, I feel like now slowing the game down just a tad might be an idea. I still want them to play aggressive, slowing it down just a tad to try and lower the amount of goals in the game. I think that would be a sensible decision now that they're in the way. Yeah, and it's, it's a, a very fine line between being aggressive and being reckless. And I think that at times Lubbock has straddled that line somewhat precariously. Though right now they're finding a great balance and Gaming Burger is almost getting a hat trick there within the first half of the game, though. The crossbar will deny them. Macro will keep the attack going though. Another chance this time, Clavian up for it and they will tuck that in to the far post, extending the lead even further. I go. On the side of Vernon, they're struggling when the ball is up in the air. So an extra element to what Lubbock could do in this game is like, they can adapt a little bit more and say, okay, we'll play a little bit slower, but we're going to put the ball in the air constantly when we're aggressing. And that means it's going to put a lot more pressure on the Vernon players because they don't like it when the ball's in the air. Because that's three goals now coming from aerials. They've just come in from that left-hand side. And Macro setting up a great passing play. Every player in Lubbock getting a goal. And Summit returning to, or rather uh, Lubbock here, playing a Summit play style in a way. Looking for each other, calming things down, and the infield pass works to great effect. Momentum of this, this game, just this first game of the series, seems to have gone very much downhill for Vernon, right? You know, it was a very quick 1-1. One, one. Both teams were getting shots off. At, at, a tied scoreline and my seems to be the love of high school show right now. They're playing well, they're making plays, they're playing aggressively, they're keeping their identity, but also playing with a little bit of maturity on their hands. This is a lot better for Lubbock. Red X will get a good 50 and the cross half time, it, it is somewhat one-sided here in game one, but that is also the same story that we saw from last game. It might just take Crudex and company a little bit time to warm up. They just missed that one. 
And Showtime will not be able to keep that one alive. Hyper tapping it forward again. Mecro to the sideline. Crudex will get another roller and get a boost steal. So a little bit of a one-man extension here. Unfortunately, bump in Showtime as they come up and have to scramble a little bit for these touches. Certainly Vernon Township, I would say not playing as fluidly with each other, but this is also their first match on the stream here for today and the first match of group play. This is uh, certainly a different thing when you're warming up for the game versus actually being it as, as Lubbock. It seems like they are definitely playing like the team just coming off a full five game series. That would maybe get them a little bit tired or whatever. Maybe we'll see the effects of that later on in the day. Vernon, they might just need a little bit of time to warm up. We saw that in game one of the previous series, Lubbock were also the best team to beat. So we'll see if that Seems to be a trend, just getting one. Lubbock are just a better team overall. A little bit of a hit to the back post. Kurdex will tap that slightly forward. It will fake an aerial and actually gets a good dribble going. Get some boost on the side and we'll try to bring it across. Roller out, showtime. Off the corner again, it's gonna bounce straight down. However, the rollout will only go to Macro. Showtime with a good 50 will keep it in the corner. And at this point, we we talked about this in the previous series, but I think if I'm Vernon Township, I think you have to accept that you start off slow, you're going to give up, unfortunately, a fifth. And at this point, it's really just about trying to show that proof of concept on offense. You have to get some more shots uh, on target because right now it's starting to look very, very interesting for their defensive chances down the stretch here. Bring it to get more shots on goal, put a little bit more pressure on the defenders on the side of Lubbock and try and make them a little bit more uncomfortable. Maybe uh, adopt a similar approach to Summit if you really want to do that. That might not be how you typically want to play. Uh, maybe not what you're most comfortable with, but it was an effective strategy for Summit and it might be something that Vernon should consider. With 40 seconds remaining at this point, it's really just about clock management for Lubbock as they're trying to close out game number one in which they have looked really in every way uh, the dominant force here. Five goals off of nine shots. And we're seeing Vernon Township just trying to get a couple more on the board. There's at least one. So familiar scoreline for game one, 5-2 here. So this time it's uh, Lubbock getting a, a good start. So Vernon Township is getting some shots on target. This is more of the style that I would like to see them get underneath in. It might just be a factor of warming up, but it's nice to see them advance up and get a good read and be able to bury those opportunities. That's a deja vu, doesn't it, right? 5-2 with a consolation goal in the last 30 seconds. Right, this happened in the last series, beloved. You'll have to hope now that they, they keep their identity, they keep good looking to score goals, and that's definitely a good start. Well, it has to rattle off every single aspect of the goal, both posts and the crossbar. So, uh, fortunately for them, they will be able to get another goal. That doesn't really change the result, but this is a good uh, feeling out goal to be able to boost the confidence. And you might have given up a consolation goal, but you're also showing that you're more than capable of scoring a last second goal. Seven seconds remaining, and at this point, Lovick just throwing that one to the corner. Maybe trying to get actually number seven. No touch on this one. Clavian not getting that zero second, and Lovick High School will be ending game number one. 6-2 here. Good start to the series, but as we have seen, Game 1's maybe not the best way of predicting the rest of the series. Watching Summit, right? You know, I kind of got a sense that they would have the intelligence to reset and adapt and go and play their play style, right? Something that suits them more doesn't really suit Lubbock, right? But that was something that I sense that Summit was able to be, be able to go and do, right? That sense of something that we're comfortable with, playing so and Penny on the side balls. I'm not sure that's something Vernonton would really want to do. I don't really think VTS, VTSH Vikings really want to do that. I don't really think it would be their style. And that concerns me a great deal because both of these teams going for aggressive plays, Lubbock have been the better team at that. One thing that VTHS could do, though, is just get more shots off. Put them under more pressure, try and make them uncomfortable, and then see how that develops the series onwards. Yeah, I would I would like to see uh, Lubbock be put in more uncomfortable situations. Vernon Township had a couple times where the ball was rolling out to them, and maybe they didn't have a clean shot, but they would just lob it to the corner, and they'd hit it again to the corner. And sometimes, even if you don't have a clean shot, just throwing it near the goal, or at least on the backboard, will force Lubbock to take that seriously. It's going to make them jump. It's going to slow them down. It's going to make them use up boosts. I'd like to see a little bit more of that from Vernon Township. It felt like a lot of these touches were just trying to hit the ball hard down into the offensive half, 
but maybe not getting anything real dangerous out of it. So game number two, to see if anything will change for them. Fresh score line here with everything wiped and see if maybe Vernon Township can get on a nice start like they did last game. At least they'll get a 50 here. And they go on across and Mecro will be able to ramp that one over and on the counter attack, not able to get the air dribble. Red X will get a nice clear down and uh, at least for right now, uh, starting off at least uh, somewhat positively here for Vernon Township. They will have to get this clear though, and it will be able to go to the corner for a showtime to collect. Yeah, and I want to see them try and develop a play here. Or maybe, maybe get a shot off at the end of it, but it just seems that when they have possession of the ball, like they just don't know what to do with it. They just want to get rid of it as soon as possible. It's like a game pop as hero for them when they have possession. And it can be tough, especially if no one's able to touch that hot potato as Clavian going to get up this one very early. And I love that touch. You don't maybe have the angle for the shot. So instead, into the ceiling, straight down, and Gaming Burger does what really they're doing best, just getting on top of a loose ball. They've done it a lot in game number one, and apparently they're doing the same in game number two. Goal within the first minute here for Lubbock. We're doing game one, especially it's like not just game one, series one of game one, right? They were really into getting on those loose balls. And this time, they're converting those loose balls into goals every single time they're in the opposition half. And that's something you could always rely on. And Credix was denied a little bit there as Necro had to scramble for this one. On the counterattack, Macro's actually able to beat two of them. Credix will just tap that one off the backboard. Clavian, no touch. Showtime. A little bit of a chance to start up an offensive attack, though. Limited boost will result in them just actually rotating out. They do not want to even play the 50. Prodex, roller up the back wall, Clavian. Temporary touch, showtime, coming in, good tap off the backboard. Crudex has to a bit, will get some boost, really using their time for this. Unfortunately, trying to go for a pass in the middle, though, no one will be able to read that one into the far corner. Gaming Burger, tap down, Mecro on the back end of that one, good dunk over. Who is there? Only Crudex, and just a temporary tap into midfield. Clavian, one more slow down. They have one player to beat. They do. It doesn't have the pace, though, and another ball will go back to the orange half. In this much of Lubbock just have a little bit more quality. Right? There's no play style difference between the two teams. There's no momentum shift. It's just Lubbock have a little bit more quality on the ball, and that's what's giving them the edge in this series. It's still only one goal in it, and as I say that, though, a dangerous ball across Gaming Burger. Uncharacteristic miss there. That one will go over the bar. Showtime moving up. Clavian will tap that back. It's a fast break, potentially, for Vernon Township, though. They have to slow it down at least a little bit. The back pass not there. Hyper will hold it up still in the corner for Crudex to follow. And Gaming Burger, temporary tap. Crudex, tough angle. They make it work off the defender and in 1 1 right after halftime. Exactly what you need if you're Vernon time. Just after halftime. So, now, you know, halftime in Rocket League when you're, when you're in the game yourself, that is a nice, you know, kind of checkpoint to think about. You know, it's 1 1 at halftime. Why can't we go and win this game in the second half? That sort of thing, right? And they can't go and win this game in the second half. Love it. Yeah, they've had a little bit more quality, a lot more attacks, but the scoreline still got one. They clearly haven't been finishing off their chances. And what they have done on the side of Barnantown is scored their chances. So who's to say they can't make it the same in the second half? And I love the opportunity taken from them. Is The thing I like about that from Crudux is that they tap it in an awkward position. Instead of just getting out, they wait for that mistake to come out, and they're able to capitalize on it and from a tough angle as well. So really now on Lubbock to see if they can get their own mistake forced as Gaming Burger has been time and time again, the player to really crash in on goal and force the defense to pay attention and almost got that one to work. Clavian getting a bunch of deflections here. Crudex is gonna have to wrangle this one on their goal line. Flicks past one, goes underneath a second. Clavian with the quick turn will at least keep it in the half and the shot over that last defender will find the near post for the lead. That's the bit of quality that I am talking about, though. Just the ability to know where your opponent is, that awareness, take it just over them and then get that shot away. Not many Rocket League players at this youth level will be able to do that. Very strong play from the side of Lubbock. And it's, it's a good presence of mind, really, to be able to just take that deep breath, understand where the defense is, and take that space when needed. It's good field vision and awareness. It got Lubbock pretty far in that last series, but right now I think they're really uh, reaping the fruits. 
of their labor here as they are extending their lead, or rather getting a lead back. And now it's at a chance that I'm curious about Vernon Township. I think they're really at the crux of the game where they have to really put up. They've done well so far, but can he get a second goal and bring this series back level? Unfortunately, that attack won't be the one. And they're gonna have to deal with Mekro's hit all the way to the far corner. They gotta get this loose ball clear. Southland's made a mistake there in rotation somewhere. Maybe a double commit here on this ball where Mako's going for it. Yeah, that's exactly what happened there. 3-1. And this series, yeah, it's been kind of tight. You know, the goal is scoring and Bowden's half the net. Uh, the only differential really being Lubbock having a bit more quality. But one thing I will say is Lubbock look a lot more comfortable in this series, right? Vernon haven't really shown that they're going to go and win this series. They've shown that they can compete in this series, but haven't really shown any signs of going and beating Lubbock. And, and right now, if, if not for Lubbock, just barely missing on some of these, getting denied by the fourth man really on defense, by the frame of the goal. They're putting on a lot of pressure. They're getting another one. That's their fourth goal off of 10 shots. And I completely agree. Vernon Township, they look like they have opportunities, but it's ended prematurely due to just a tap away. They rotate out. It's a defensive error. Whatever it is, their transitions onto offense really just not working. I think they're getting caught defensively a bit too many times. Another multi-goal lead being opened up by Lubbock here in game two. And they're 15 seconds away from really just cruising here to a second game win in the series but it, it's not enough to go and win a game. Never mind go and win a series. I feel like there has to be some sort of adjustment made or some sort of mentality change in Vernon are gonna come back into this. Yeah, I like their chances at least to move up on offense and be able to get those hits. It's just the quality of those hits when you're facing a team that doesn't give you a lot of space, that doesn't give you many chances to actually strike a ball on target, you have to make them count. You saw earlier, Crudex was able to get a very tough angle to work for them, but then since that, it really just did not appear for them. So going back to really the point we brought up in game, the beginning of game two or prior to game two, it's taps on target. It's making Lubbock really have to work for it. At times, I think it was in the, the Vernon Township's mind, but the rotations, uh, the midfield play really let them down, uh, it seemed, uh, down the stretch of this game. Go back to Lubbock because, you know, of course they played in our previous series. They were, they were, they looked good there. Didn't look good enough to win the series. Didn't look like the better team, but they looked good there. They got two games against a very strong Summit team. Here they have looked excellent apart from their finishing. Like, it's a big compliment to say that they are creating a lot of chances. Probably the most chances created in any game you'll see in this tournament, right? They're creating a lot of chances, but they aren't putting them all the way. And against the team that maybe isn't Vernon time, maybe they would be struggling with the scoreline a little bit more. I would like to see Lubbock putting a lot of more of those chances away and making the scoreline eight, nine, ten goals. And we'll see if that really does come to fruition. Game three, backs against the wall. We're up to see Vernon Township, their first group stage game, able to bring out the brooms, get the reverse sweep. Certainly a tall order the way Lubbock High School's been playing, though. One game at a time, it has to be in the back of Vernon Township's mind. They'll start things off with at least a little bit of a roller into the corner, though Mekro gets a the brunt of that challenge. Another roller to the side. Crudex to the sideline will slow things down temporarily. Clavian with a good power hit here will follow themselves in another tap into the corner. So uh, certainly Lubbock not lacking for speed here, still getting on the end of the balls and we'll take these 50s now as Gaming Burger will deflect another one for in Township, at least holding on for right now, but uh, certainly Lubbock not lacking for confidence in a lot of these challenges. For Vernon Town, yeah, they, they've been on the defense the majority of it, but they haven't conceded yet, right? Lubbock is a team, you know, if the game isn't going fast, they aren't scoring goals, they do tend to struggle. That's exactly what happened in their last series. So yeah, they have been playing well, but there are some good signs. Was just barely a miss from Clavian Gaming Bird, though. They're always lurking on that follow up. You're going to get denied there, but products and company for Vernon Township. I think the thing that really speaks to me at times is just they can't get up for these clears. Clavian Cam, though, bangs that one in on the right post, and that's the lead. I'll score in the next couple of seconds because they were starting to build. Right, they were starting to get a couple of decent clearances, and of course, a couple of clearances could make a couple of nice loose balls that you get on to and maybe create something with. So, the game was starting to shift. This game in particular in the series was starting to shift a little bit, but now Lubbock are back on the offense. This is going to be really nice. 
man, right there. You're caught in a very tough position here if you are Showtime. You can't read that bounce, and you understand you can't really turn to challenge, so you just try to sit in space. Gaming Burger knows this. Sets up a little bit of a touch up for the flick, and very little you can do about that. And the second goal here for Lubbock, and uh, the failure to clear the ball is going to be starting to haunt Vernon Township here. They were holding on that whole first minute, doing well to be able to get just enough of a clear, but now it's starting to be a repeat of the prior games. I'd like to see opportunities like this maybe open up into something. Crudex gave opening up a shot. It's going to be denied by the woodwork. It's going to go out to the corner for a Clavian pinch clear. This would think that is a chance they have to score if they want to get back into this series, right? Because they've only scored two goals, two goals in any of the games, right? In this series and. They need two goals now to tie it in three minutes. That was a chance that needed to be scored if Vernon Time wanted to win this series. We'll see if they can do something with this, but Crux is just going to throw that one upfield. Gameberg tucks that over both players. Low boost, low challenge, and up and over is going to be the solution. 3-0 right before halftime. Yeah, that was a nice, good first touch. The second touch, excellent, just to know where the other two players are and get that in. Definitely not an easy skill. I know I wouldn't exploit that. So we'll see, really, at this point, if Lubbock is going to be able to just cruise to this one, we're going to have to really see a complete turnaround here from Vernon Township. I think the clear's going to have to pick up in quality. We're going to have to see Rex and company get a decent amount of pressure forward. At this point, the speed seems to be lacking them. They're just not quite up far enough. We're going to try for a back pass, but it's going to be a temporary touch over. A roller across the backboard. Gamer is up for it. No touch. Crudex will be able to get to it just in time by a little bit of deflection. It's not equal to clear. They will be able to finally touch that one down line and get a follow. But ultimately, it's just going to be met by Gaming Burr yet again. Flavian comes through and no time met again. Good hit into the corner here. Maybe a pass at four Crudex to get onto. So even that, Lubbock will be swarming that very quickly in still two minutes to go. So time on the clock for Vernon Township. They're getting closer with some of these fast breaks, but I think as we see from Crudex's shots earlier on, it's just when you get those opportunities, they have to be taken and they're just not getting enough of them. And when they do, it's really the quality just isn't there. Yeah. I wouldn't say there's really a chance for Vernon Township. Look, there's another area that Gaming Burgers able to get onto, able to score. My only complaint for Lubbock in this series in particular is they had, they could have scored a lot more. Like realistically, for differential sake, they could have scored a lot more because they've had so many chances. They created so many opportunities. Vernon trying to be extremely uncomfortable. I feel like Lubbock, if they took a lot more chances, this could be a lot more fun. And We'll see if things get a little bit worse, unfortunately. Confused in the back and a deflection will go in for number five. That's it's not very nice, is it? You know, you're 4-0 no down in, in this game. You're 2-0 no down in the series. And for something like that to happen, it, it can be quite demoralizing. It's going to be hard to pick yourself back up for, for that one, especially not just for this series, but the rest of the day. They still have two more matches to go. Yeah, unfortunately for any team that does get the loss, they're gonna have to keep on playing. And at this point, it's just Vernon Township. They are down bad on the morale. Unfortunately, Lubbock will just get another floater in and Showtime just it gets a little too eager on this one. And I think this is really the point where Lubbock can take this and move on. Though right now, I think uh, there is an element within tournament play that really gets interesting is that Lubbock will get this series win here as they hold on to the 6-0 and at this point i'm curious because i know there was a complaint recently in a lot of tournaments where when lower level pl teams play and they are beaten by higher level teams it's almost like it slows you down because you're not used to playing at a slower pace you're not having to really play at the peak of your powers you really just have to finish off more basic opportunities uh, with richardson high school coming down the pike for lubbock which is the next match on the schedule here, they're going to potentially have to pick up the pace again because this game, they've kind of cruised a little bit. But as we see, not all teams are like that. Summit High School took them to game five. And even though this uh, game is a little bit of a walk in the park, they can't let it distract them really from uh, that broader goal ahead. I mean, even for Lubbock's sake, like 
you know, they had to play a kind of slower pace in the last game, or they had to play a slower pace at times during their previous match. They're going to have to play probably three different paces in three different games in a row. That could be quite difficult for a team, especially when it is younger players, it is the high school level. It can be quite difficult for them to keep their heads during that. And we'll see the ball finally bounce down and Lubbock High School will be able to get that last game 6-0, a fairly impressive performance, 16-3 for the series goal line differential there. Vernon Township, not the start that they would have hoped for. They still have two more matches to really prove themselves here into the series, but that is exactly the response at least Lubbock would need after that loss in the first game on stream. That was a pretty good response. It was a pretty solid performance. They never really lacked any identity. Just finishing off some other chances is really the only weakness I saw from them there. I'd be curious to see, though, if they played Summit again, how that would go, or even their next matchup, which will be on stream against Richardson. I'm a, we haven't seen Richardson yet, so we'll see how they adjust to that series in particular as well. Yeah, and we see them playing very well in this series, and it's much needed, so they will be one-on-one. -on -one, so trying to catch up and potentially take the lead in their group, we'll have to see what happens next, but we're going to have to throw you guys to a brief break here. Lubbock High School taking the 3-0. More matches ahead. Don't go anywhere. More 2021 EGF High School National Championships after this intermission. could be all it is you need cause we are trying to find a way to feel if i could sleep i dream of what we'd be but i can feel you slip further from me oh it makes it hard to be when you are old that I was, but don't laugh, and I'll run into the sea, follow this heart that escapes from me, it escapes from me.
She's all design, I don't think I know you like I used to do Home like I used to do So slide So what she got in mind I don't understand you like I usually do Home like I usually do But watching your head cause you're walking on fire You're not in a self-control You're not in a self-control You're willing to risk it all Willing to risk it all And once in your head is so lost in desire And you never seem to know You're not in a self-control But you're willing to risk it all Yo In your head is 
Thank you. 
like you. Welcome back, everybody, to some more 2021 EGF High School National Championships in collaboration with Walt Disney World and ESPN Wide World of Sports. We have seen two series down between Lubbock Township, or rather uh, Lubbock High School and Summit High School. And then they, it was uh, a little bit of a transition. Lubbock lost that series, went on to the next one. They got their win against Vernon Township. And so now Lubbock is going to be finishing off their games here for a third series of the day. And the first series of the day, actually, for Richardson High School. And uh, I'm still Dana Taco. Still joining me is Ocean and uh, Lubbock High School. They've been up and down here. And this is the win that they really do need to optimize their chances here for the group stage. But like most of the time, if you're TM1, you're going through the groups. And if you're one and two, you're going out of the groups. There are some very slight differences that can let you go through the groups if one and two. Um, but it's very, very unlikely. So I feel like Lubbock have to go in this game. I think they've got to take the confidence from the last game because they were they were very strong in the previous game. They were pretty strong against Summit as well, right? They've got a very clear identity and they should keep that. But what they need to do to make sure they get into the knockout stages is to make sure they are finishing the chances they get because they create so many. And, I mean, they score a lot as well, but they, they, they could score a lot more than they do. Yeah, and we'll have to see if they get that consistency to optimize their chances getting out of groups. Again, only top two. Summit got that first win. They're waiting for the remainder of this game. Lubbock is rounding theirs out. Game number one, Richardson High School. The first time we've seen them on the pitch, trying to make a statement here in their first chance. And ASAP is actually going to get a nice deflection to start things off. Trev will tap another one down. Yidikin to the back post. It's a bouncer off the post. So right off the bat, Lubbock having uh, to adjust to a new team is uh, under pressure early. Yeah, it's a disadvantage of playing. Three games in a row, but not only three games in a row, the first three games of the day in your group, right? You don't get to scout previously. You just got to just three styles right off the bat. And Richardson with some fantastic interplay here, some great passing, and ultimately it's just going to overwhelm the defense. First goal to Richardson after 40 seconds. Yeah, it's strong here. They've got pretty good rotation. They always have a player looking at the ball or they're not going to go into a challenge. They're at least in a position to, after their opponent makes a play, they can get involved, right? Pretty good rotations for the first 40 seconds or so. I know that's a very small time period, but no mistakes at a high school level, that's pretty strong. And Trev is going to try to keep possession with uh, getting some nice little taps forward and a 50. Yudikin over the top. Macro will be able to get across to this one ASAP. Will roll that one toward. Not a trouble for Clavian. Just going to tap that one straight back down. High lob. Will open up an opportunity for Gaming Bird to find Clavion on a pass. Yedekin's there, but the bounce out for Mechro on the roller will be saved. And the double commit actually turns into a clear. ASAP right back over the midfield line. And a high lob for Yedekin, the redirect. Not finding the target. Mechro getting on top of the third man. And we're going to keep on playing 1-0. But Richardson High School really going for the jugular, it seems. Now in a situation they haven't found themselves in before. Now they are the team that are constantly defending. They're allowed to play really aggressive, but they can't seem to get forward. In these longer clears, something we've criticized the teams previously for, really just throwing away possession. I think at this point, it's just a matter of feeling like they need to survive here. They need to be able to get out of their half and they just want to relieve some pressure. And the longer clears aren't working as well. Macro will send another one down. Trev. I lob into the corner. They don't really have the angle to tap it again. Yudikin will go for a bump instead. It's actually two times now that a bump has opened up something, though. The angle for Yudikin, not what they wanted. The back pass to Trev will preserve the possession, but it's actually something that I'm admiring Richardson for. They're looking for these passes, but also the physical play is also still opening up opportunities and making them be able to extend offense. Like this Richardson side already, right? They, they seem to be kind of playing on how Lubbock did in previous series, but they're adding different elements, like different bumps, like different demos, like different plays off the backboard. I like this a lot from Richardson, putting a lot of pressure on Lubbock, and Lubbock, a team not used to defending this much, they are really struggling. And that's just characteristic of that panicky defense. You just want to relieve pressure, you want to get out of your half. Gaming Burger might have had an opportunity to hit that to the side, maybe play for some possession, maybe keep it a little bit closer, but flips it forward. Good job on Richardson to hop on that, dunk that one in. We've crossed halftime in game number one. And while the scoreline isn't extreme, there's a lot of shots, and Richardson looking very confident. This ball 
has sparsely moved past the midfield line up until something like that. Another shot there, and Gaming Burger will tap that to the far side. Lubbock starting to get a couple of plays, and that's a little bit dodgy. I think that was a triple commit there for our Richardson. Maybe just need to warm the brains up, warm the communication up, but that was, that was a chance that Lubbock really needed to take. And Richardson, one thing that I think is somewhat dangerous when teams play in this style of playing very fast, getting on the ball quickly, is sometimes communication does lag because you're making decisions so quickly that players almost simultaneously will call a ball and challenge. So one thing that I would definitely be looking out for down the stretch is if Lubbock is able to find firm footing on defense, transition onto offense, I am a bit curious to see if Richardson's going to get a little bit more panicky in the air. At least right now, it seems like they're playing with a lot of confidence and the execution is there. Number three for them off of an interesting angle from Trev reading the bounce. But they're a lot of unique lines. Not just like off the backboard, but just little passing plays. Some of them starting in their own half. Sometimes they'll, they'll play a back pass to someone in their own half and clear it to someone else. Some very unique passing plays coming, coming out from Richardson. Not only am I interested to see how the rest of this game goes, but I really am interested to see how they would play against Summit, because that seems like a really interesting clash of styles. Yeah, and right now, it's it's something about these game number ones or one team just coming in a little bit cleaner. Richardson continuing on, and I love the simplicity of this. They're not trying to overcomplicate everything. They know they have a chance to put it into a position that'll make Lubbock sweat and they do they have a player crash and they get a goal every player on Richardson getting a goal everyone involved on the offense and this is a very impressive introduction to the stream for Richardson again just their first game on maybe getting a little bit tired they've had to play three games in a row but this is relentless this is absolutely brilliant from Richardson and one thing they are doing that Lubbock were never able to do with this aggressive style is score goals. Yeah, Lubbock did score. Obviously, they scored goals with the aggressive stuff. But they should have scored a lot more, and Richardson are scoring most of their key chances. And I love it. Just to break down that last play, Yedekin has a touch, understands that they really don't have a flick, so instead of flicking it over, they just tap it right along the backside. The last defender, again, they can't get a pass, they just take a 50. That's a well-designed play. That one, not as well-designed by Lovick, but they all count the same. At least one on the board here with 45 to go. You get a little bit confused there. Probably another slight miscommunication there from Richardson. Thankfully for them, it might not matter too much. They need to score four goals in 45 seconds. Do love a high school duck, so that's very unlikely. But Richardson, they look very strong. They create some very unique chances, but they seem to have a couple of miscommunication errors. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like Richardson is going to be plagued by that. It's just everything in front of the goal line within really that six yard box. They've been getting on these balls very well. Three goals for Trev, two for Yidikin, but even within that, oh yeah five goal uh, or five sixths of the goals Yidikin has been involved with three assists to their name. Really, it's impressive to see not only uh, players emerging as uh, really the leading goal scorer, but they're also dishing passes to their teammates very well. So this is a, certainly a Richardson squad making a statement in game number one, almost on Brazil territory here. Uh, I guess Lovick is trying to prevent that for right now, but this is quite the statement to come out in the first game of series and the first game on stream. Cool. That was a nice clearance there. You know, that they talked to each other to try and get it right. Richardson, they want that Brazil desperately. Are they going to get it? Oh. And yeah, we will be seeing it cleared down. But Richardson decisively taking game number one by a scoreline of six to one. And at this point, it's really just on Lubbock to collect themselves. And this is actually, I would say, the exact situation that I was worried about when we talk about Lubbock and Vernon Township in the last series, where Lubbock really cruises to a victory, and it's almost like you have to warm back up for the Richardson game, and Richardson is showing them exactly why. Fantastic play. Lubbock felt pressed into their half, and I think it's really taking the full 60 seconds between these matches, catching your breath, and refocusing, because that got ugly pretty quickly. I think Lubbock has the skill to hang in these games, but they need to start uh, focusing a little bit more on defense and in that transition to offense they could do is consider what summit did to that right and put the ball out to the side and then start to build plays yourselves from there because when the ball's in the side there's not really a threat of the ball going in if your opponent wins a loose ball yeah it might come off the backboard they might get a chance from it but 
they're not going to score directly. So you have a little bit more time when the ball is in the side and then you can start to make your own plays. And you can, you'll probably panic a lot less when, when the ball is there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Pacing-wise, maybe if they played this Richardson team first and then kind of went down the scales of how they would have to play tempo-wise, that could have definitely suited Lubbock High School a little bit better. Yeah, the, the transition on is a very difficult, and I think really speaking of that sense of panic on defense is when you face a team like Richardson. It is so tempting to just throw it downfield with a new scoreline renewed here. 0-0 zero, zero for game number two. I'm interested to see if Lubbock can have something else in planned. How about off the ceiling here? Macro going to chase that one just in case. Gaming Burger, one more touch to keep it alive, though bounce shot only going to go off the sidewall. Flavian, quick up. Good win. Do they have a double tap? They don't. Gaming Burger has a follow. It's just wide. Mecker on the follow. Third time's the charm. And it's this time, Lubbock taking the lead. A lot better, right? They're starting to create some of those plays. Before, you probably would have seen Lubbock go for goal there. The second attempt, I mean, I would have liked to see Clavian get the, the double tap. It would have been a really nice goal. But I like the fact Gaming Burger didn't go for goal because it wasn't really possible to score from that angle with that many bodies in front. Hit it against the wall. Macro got the opportunity that they needed, then it opened up nicely. Before, they would have just hit it. Yeah, and I absolutely love that, really, that presence of mind to, instead of just slapping the ball forward, to look for the pass off the back wall, knowing that you just have to beat one player. And good job that the third player man was aware of the play and be able to tuck that away. So they got the lead, but that's only one part of the story. They still have to hold the lead. Richardson definitely on the back foot, at least here, as Mecro sets up a flip reset. They use it, but no contact. Clavian will catch and get actually get a bump. Gonna benefit them a little bit. They get demoed, but Gaming Burger is on this one. Great save by Richardson. Mecro will keep it alive into the corner. Gaming Burger will turn again. It'll deflect again. And where was this Lubbock High School in game number one? They look in control on offense right now. And they're really pushing the issue here up until that demo. And finally, Richardson will get that clear out side if this was game one of this series that would have went straight back into the the possession of Richardson so this is already an improvement coming out from Lubbock High School a nice adaptation and I think that's going to be the theme of this group how do teams adapt to each other yeah, and Richardson is the one that has to adapt they'll go for an air trouble bump as a truth abandon that one followed by Yedekin not going to be touched Trev Temporary touch in the sideline. No touch by Yeet, but ASAP gets a shot. Open opportunity for Trev. They put it wide. The recovery on the landing. They just couldn't angle their car. Maybe just tried to adjust for the next step before executing their landing. Regardless of what it is, a huge missed opportunity. And if this turns out to be a very close game, maybe something they'll come back to regret. They had a behind them and that puts a lot more pressure on you. And you know, you, you can't take your time. You have to get that landing perfect. And Obviously, that is a, a chance you should be scoring, and Richardson might have to fight back with that in mind. Macro playing dangerously with that ball on the goal line. Gets a catch out, but deflection to ASAP off the near post. No touch, no follow. Macro soft touch pass one. Deflected into the middle for gaming. That's just a roller down. ASAP reads that back post save required, and Clavian gets it. So starting to heat up a bit for Richardson. Still looking for a goal. Quickly approaching two minutes remaining. And at least for right now, Lubbock dealing with pressure well, though certainly that dam feels like it's about to burst off the post into the ceiling and then down the line yet again. Richardson certainly knocking at that door, though. To slow the game going. I know they like to play fast themselves, but if they slow this down, it becomes a lot more difficult for Richardson because Richardson right now are putting a lot of pressure on that Lubbock back line. They're trying to help out with some demos. Edekin demos one, bumps another ASAP. They don't have the boost. They have a double fake underneath the defenders. 1-1. One, one. Oh, oh, that was dirty. One fake, two. Oh, oh. Well, that, was, that was absolutely Ooh. brutal. That's that's one, one way to equalize. Not only do you get the equal, equalizing goal, but also you absolutely torment the brands of your opponents. And now you've got to ride that momentum. Oh, oh my goodness! What a pinball play here! Off the ceiling, off the defender, off the post, and in. That that is the what? That, that, sorry, that was the best thing that oh could have goodness. happened to Richardson High School. 10 seconds ago, they were 1-0 time. Fired through two pieces of not just 
kill an absolute party, but absolute madness. They are now 2 1 up and about to go 2 0 up in this series. And this is just absolutely ridiculous right now, as we'll see Mecha have to make a last second save, and they will. It's Clavian will. Slowly gather this one down, then just throw that one in the middle. Mecro, try play for some 50s and we'll be able to keep that high. Go ASAP, long clear down. Clavian wrapping around for this one. Demo in the backfield will open up a little bit of space as Clavian just tapping it slowly across and to make matters worse for them, they're down and actually Lovick unfortunately has lost a player due to connection. So unfortunately they're gonna be shorthanded and they're gonna need all the hands they can get ASAP. Seven shots just to themselves and more importantly, two goals to give them a two goal lead. Such an interesting series, Donnie. I do think that Lovick could have slowed the series, or sorry, 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 slowed the game down because they were in a really difficult position. They were conceding a lot of shots. And honestly, Richardson maybe should have scored more of those opportunities, but they need to slow it down because now the floodgates have opened and the floodgates have opened nicely for Richardson High School. Yeah, at this point, it's, it's, it is difficult because you do have that DC, so they will lose that, but they, I wouldn't necessarily lost grip of the game, but they did have a lead and ultimately Richardson overwhelmed them just a little bit. So this will, it seems like it will go by the way of Richardson, but I would still say, once we get the player back in, we have the restored size. I think game three is very interesting. I think Lubbock has seen a glimpse of what happens when they play controlled, when they look for passes, and they were looking very confident. I would love to see some more of that. And unfortunately, it seems like they will need a lot more of that to come back in this series as they're going to fall down and move on to match point, especially in such an important match here. But Richardson will continue their dominance as Gameberger actually will join back in in the final 10 seconds. Unfortunately, the damage has been done. Richardson High School moving on to match point and looking to start their stream day here on group stages with a clean sweep. There, there are some differences between these two teams, but this is this is such an interesting series for me. Let's just go back and slow things down. Let's recap. For what how this series is played. Richardson High School, they come out, they play a lot aggressively. They play a lot of aggressive Rocket League, right? They play similar to how Lubbock prefer to play, but there is better at it. That first game was an absolute whitewash. Lubbock didn't really have anywhere to go. We come into game two, we see a more controlled version of that aggression from Lubbock High School. They take a 1-0 lead into the final two minutes or so, then Richardson High School, they show their quality, double fakes, Aerials off the wall predicting and blocking. It was brilliant. They take a 2-1 lead. And suddenly, just the class and the creativity of Richardson High School gets them right back into the lead and in control of this series. But Lubbock, for the first three minutes of that game too, they looked like they were in control. And this, game, this series is not over. Yeah, the Richardson players, I don't think a plateau is the right word, but it's the same level of skill that we saw in game number one. They're finishing opportunities, they're playing better. I think the difference in play comes from Lubbock. They're playing better, and I love the play style off the bat. I think the issue is that they just got scored on and then immediately got a second one right after that, and that can really cripple your chances of a comeback or rather getting back into the series. Though they still have one more chance. They only have one loss to give, unfortunately, so they will be out of, the, out of uh, this match the next time they lose this one. But reverse sweep required. If they can improve, build on game number two, I think they have a decent opportunity. So they got the next five minutes to see what they can do about this one. And they're gonna start off with at least a little bit of a chance. Mecro just not able to really three point turn that way into a shot. It's gonna go the other way for Gaming Burger to tap into the sideline, but they missed their flip. And that's gonna be a roller in and an unexpected early goal for Richardson. I wonder if that disconnect in the last game has anything to do with that. Maybe a connection issue or a confidence issue. Maybe like, because Gaming Burger is a quality player. We've seen that. We've seen them score a lot of aerials, particularly in game, the second series they played against Barney. Gaming Burger made a lot of really nice plays. I don't think that is a characteristic mistake from Gaming Burger. I think that's just something's playing on the mind there. Something just isn't quite going wrong. 
I think sometimes the, that's a type of touch where I feel like you're not, your priority is not to get the absolute majority of the car on the touch. You're just trying to get a cute little touch, tap to the sideline, and maybe just miscalculate a little bit as we actually see an interesting play there, opening for a demo. Then on the counter, a demo in response. Mecro is going to have to go all the way back. Trev with the backflip pass cut out by Gaming Burger. He'll try to advance down the field again, but Yidikin. Tap in the middle, cut out by Mecro. Clavian up with them. A little bit of a giveaway chip over the top, and there's the response. Good response as well. They need a got. Mecro just seems to be that player in this series. Four love it. It just pops up exactly where you need it. And that's not an easy shot. You're a pretty tight ankle there. Mecro, when needed, has been stepping up in this series, and they're going to need him to do a lot more of that if they want to keep going and fight this to the brink. And I think one thing that I'm seeing out of Richardson is they're actually doing really well in getting on top of the ball, but the second really chance follow-ups, they're not as clean. I think if you have a player like Macro who's willing to be patient, wait out that next touch and get that shot into the open opportunity, that's the way you're back into it. But Gaming Burger gets a demo and a fake of their own, though the third man able to recover and Richardson have to wipe a little sweat off the brow. That was a close one. And they're gonna have to keep being under pressure. Macro gets denied by ASAP. And Gaming Burger and Clavian will regain possession in midfield, but my goodness, Richardson playing a little fast and loose in the defensive third. Yeah, I honestly, I think Gaming Burger fake was a little bit unnecessary. I think they should have just got a shot and go and see what happened because it could have deflected nicely into their favor. And that player, Macro, again, is the player that pops up. Unfortunately, not getting the ball this time, but got a nice shot off. Richardson, though, starting to come back into this one. You might feel that Lubbock's chances or slightly shortened after missing a couple of chances. See, high ball by Yidikin. It's a fantastic bounce for Tretman ASAP. Unfortunately, all they're going to do is bump each other in the midfield. They'll have to wait for the next opportunity. Clavian trying to set up their own team's opportunity. We'll go back to gaming ASAP. Down the line, Clavian tap in the middle. Dangerous touch, Yidikin, an absolute slap on target. Incredible pace on that one. And right before halftime, Richardson has their lead. This game of two, game three of this series, it's, it's going to be down to who's going to pop up in the right places, fill up a couple of hard time and get those goals. But also the creativity of Richardson is brilliant. We saw earlier in game one, they were going for a lot of demos, a lot of bumps and making it difficult. And the defense for Lubbock, they're already uncomfortable on defense, but also just like what they're doing in the air, and the passing plays they're doing, they're a little bit unorthodox. And I like the creativity from Richardson. Macro almost got chipped there as Gaming Burger gets this touch to the corner. And I agree that at times Lubbock has a decent build up, but Richardson is mixing things up. It's keeping Lubbock uncomfortable. And right now, it seems as though Lubbock has returned to that uh, somewhat reminiscent of game one where they're throwing the ball down the field. They're not connecting on those passes and they're getting uh, really torn apart on that. That second goal was really just them tapping it unnecessarily from the corner. That pass. Really the best opportunity we've seen out of them in quite some time. They're going to keep it going with another high tap. Gaming Burger will decide against that one, get a boost steal instead. Flavian tap this one temporarily down, but ASAP a good demo and the good awareness there from Richardson, not only rotating back on defense, but using that rotation back to clear out a player from the Lubbock offense. Yeah, this is one of the chances that they have now to get forward here. Lubbock, they have to hope this points as well for them. One more touch. Oh, not quite. They're still very much in this game, and they need to be. This is their elimination game. If Lovett cannot pull this one out, they will be swept 3-0. Not only dealing them a second loss, but also not giving them much help on game differential. A little bit of miscommunication. They don't really have a lot of space for mistakes like that. It won't be harmed, but another long clear will have to open things up for Gaming Burger. Slightly on target. You can across the middle. Mecro's there. Curves around it, pass middle, ASAP. They don't touch it, Clavian does, and that, just like that, it's an equalizer. Coming up in the correct spots yet again, it's Macro from Lovick. Whenever they need someone in, a, in an area, they're there. Because they're putting that cross, and if, if Clavian missed that, they shouldn't be in the national championships. It's a really good finish. <laughs> they're in the right spot, 2-2. Now off restart, Gaming Burger is required. Trev left alone. They're gonna deal with that by rolling it up. Macro decides they don't want that angle. They're gonna retreat just temporarily as Flavian will clear that one up. Gaming Burger goes up with them to the far post. Macro is waiting for that touch. Lob over, Trev back 
Just a high lob, but Gameberger and Clavian are back in time. And we're going to a little bit of long ball. I think both teams understand what's at stake. 2-2. Two -two. It's such a back and forth game. They do not want to be the team that really gives away possession. So they're kind of just throwing it down, making sure that they are collected on defense. And right as I say that, though, they throw one middle. What a save by Yedekin, but they can't get the second off the post. What a close call for Richardson. They're going to hang on, and we might have to go to overtime to see if Lubbock can take this one. Oh my goodness, Chaz. <laughs> oh, that was insane. Not only that terrific save, but then the miss coming just after. I, I didn't see quite who it was. Not just the mess was there, but that was Lubbock's chance to get back into this series, and they might struggle now. And now Lubbock, unfortunately, is on the back foot here. They get the saves out. They were absolutely robbed there on the open net shot. But Richardson, they still have a lot to do as well. They're in overtime just the same. And Clavy with the slow play goes under over top one, not under the second. Mecro has a chance to be the hero. No touch ASAP. Long clear. Clavian, they're left alone. Trev is there for it. Clear down the middle. Clavian's gonna have to turn for this one. It's off target. And Mecro back in time gets another clear. Such a tense state of affairs here, Ocean, as we're in overtime. Lovick still fighting for their series life. Macro come in there. Macro came in from the side and it is the player to pop up every single time Lubbock needs someone. Macro is just there. I don't, I don't know if they're teleporting or something, but it's happening. ASAP, another clear down to buy Richardson some space. Trev, put that there. A little bit of deflection in the middle. Gaming Burger, not panic. They will roll that one out in the midfield. ASAP to the backboard, Macro, they jumped for it. They're a little bit late, it's off the post. It's a center in front, Clavian, they're trying to rush. Trev with the lob, it's over the part again. Macro, that's not a clear, it's gonna go to ASAP. Another shot on, and it'll go to the corner. Lubbock dealing a lot of shots and getting some decent saves, but they don't have that consistent transition quite yet, and it can barely even get it out of their half. Macro will finally get a high lob, but even that one will be touched by ASAP Truce. Clavian into the corner, and that'll buy him a little bit of breathing room. Nearly two minutes played in overtime. Richardson getting some close opportunities, but Lubbock still hanging in there. These teams hitting shot after shot after shot, attack after attack after attack. You just need that bit of quality to get that goal. I'm not sure who's going to have that bit of quality. Gamingberger at least will get on this one first and not get the follow-up. Clavian's going to be very careful in this touch. It goes across the goal, no one there though. So they will be able to slow this down. Mecro, soft touch, deflection in middle. Trev sets it up off the backboard. Clavy needs a touch, they don't get it. They don't have that one. ASAP true so far. Yannickin on the follow. Clavy to Mecro on the double commit. Do they have someone back and the roller in from ASAP? It's just a bit too much pressure. ASAP Truce on their ninth shot of the game will end the game and the series. What if there was no double connect on that save on the line? Would they continue that? I wonder if I wonder if that wasn't an overtime goal to save the uh, overtime period to save their series. Would that have went in? The point is, it has gone in. Richardson High School win this series three to zero. But I think we I can say for both of us that was not just those three zero sweep. It was not that simple. Lubbock they were adjusting well but they just didn't have enough quality, that extra edge to get them even a game in this series. But if they did get that game free, we could be all commentating this matchup. I mean, that's that's something else. That, that ending, I was not anticipating the end to the regulation of game number three, where we just seem like we have Lubbock. They're finally getting the pressure, and then a miracle saves come out, and then they just barely put it wide on the far post and... Unfortunately, they just can't handle the overtime, but that is at least inspiring from Lubbock. Their day is done. They're going to be ending the day with one series win and two series losses. Richardson, though, looking forward, very interesting team. We'll have to see uh, really if we can pick their brains here for an interview, but that will do it for the first Richardson series of the stream. We're going to throw you guys to a brief break, but we'll be back with an interview for some more 2021 EGF High School National Championships.
bracelet this time Like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far, don't know how
generous Now I've learned to never help you out Cause I'm done cleaning up your mess Found myself in my regrets I've become a little stronger now A little stronger now
Welcome back, everyone, to yet another match here in the 2021 EGF High School National Championships in collaboration with Walt Disney World and ESPN's Wide World of Sports. We've had very interesting matchups throughout this day, Ocean, and we're on to our next one. Richardson came in during that last match, had a very close call at the end, but still managed to get that 3-0 sweep over Lubbock High School. Now they're facing on Vernon Town High School, and I'm very curious to see if that form is going to continue, they're looking very strong. Vernon struggled a lot in that first series, but this is what group play comes down to one series at a time and just trying to get the best results possible. Be very fair here and say, so I, I do think Richardson are going to pretty much clean this series, right? Uh, because Vernon Town really struggled against Lubbock. And of course, we just saw Richardson 3-0 Lubbock. So it would make sense, really, for us to see Richardson 3-0 this as well. But the game after this, is probably the most important game in the group between Richardson and Summit, right? Probably both of those teams would probably go through. It's just about seeding, right? It's going to be a big clash after this game. We discussed earlier how your tempo drops when you play a team that mm -hmm. isn't as high level as you. Your tempo drops a bit. I wonder if that's going to affect Richardson going into the next game after the Vernon game against Summit. And his game one kicks off. It's really just a matter of time. We have five minutes at least in this game one to see how it works out. Vernon Township looked a little bit behind within their first match, but it's a brand new series. Richardson, certainly some intimidating opponents, and they're starting off with some nice shots as that one will glance wide, though. Prodex is on the play down a little bit. Yidikin, though, yeets this one forward and will dunk that one to the open net for 1-0. No, that surely was a yeet. Yeah, they were living up to their name there. Yeeted it from the field. I hate saying that word. I don't know why I've said it twice. <laughs> it's better than that. The important thing is, the It's a great challenge. Unfortunately, Credix actually tried to slow that play down and really that last runner wasn't buying it. He just went right for that ball. Very confident challenge. Credix will this time uh, opt to just tap that one over. And now Hyper in the midfield. Trying to get another touch on this. Credix will wrap around this. Good save, but not quite out. Trev will keep it interesting. Onto the near post. Credix temporary save. Trev, one more opportunity. Let's tap that one to the back post. All of Vernon Township just transitioning from post to post, getting some touches. Nice backfield, or rather backflip challenge here from Showtime. We'll temporarily get a clear out. One more chance, though, and no one home. ASAP Truce will roll that one in. Yeah, they're just so relentless, are they? They're so creative as well. So, like, you can't really just, like, sit back and save shots and let them pile on the pressure and then maybe get a lucky 50 and go back. They're so creative. Eventually, they're going to slow the play down and break you down one by one by one. So you can't really do that. You've got to go to them. You've got to challenge them. And I'm not sure Vernon Town really have the ability to go and do that. Yeah, they have to be very careful with other touches, especially uh, moving on to offense. I mean, there are times where the defense gets a little bare in the back from Richardson, like right there, ASAP left alone a bit. However, Prodex not able to half that one on target. ASAP will on this, though. Prodex, good save. Maybe be called into action again on the backboard and get another tap. You can back post tap ASAP. Another follow It's just going to keep that high above the goal. Rex will try and keep it low, but really their attempts at possession, it's, it's tough to play that way, I guess, especially against Richardson. The moment they feel like they see a gap, it seems like we just really hop right on. They're, I wouldn't say impatient, but <laughs> they're certainly willing to press the effort, the doomsday dish from ASAP for three. What a lovely piece of tech from Truce, and, and that's got to feel good as well, right? When you know the series is probably not going to be as important, just to get your mechanics up and get your confidence up ready for the next game, players like those really do help your mentality. I mean, it's a good thing to, I mean, of course, keep your confidence high, but uh, to not let off the gas is refreshing to see. Is it, Sometimes where they maybe have watched that game, they saw Vernon Township struggle at times, but it's it's so easy just to really not take it seriously. But it seems like they're remaining all business here. As I don't have any idea how they read that deflection, but almost getting that crazy passing play to go. And uh, they will uh, try to continue on and score on. They're not content with just getting a goal or two and playing possession. They're just going to keep on moving the ball around. So... Definitely a champion's mentality here, uh, somewhat reminiscent of uh, 
somewhat of a Germany. But then we mentioned the Brazil almost was accomplished by Richardson in game one of their last series. One thing that people recall from that is when that first goal from Brazil actually went through the Germany defense, they were furious. They were not OK with giving up one goal. It's that like really that level of excellence that they expect out of themselves. And Richardson uh, appear to be holding themselves to that as they're continuing to try to move forward. Uh, we are actually seeing some changes come through. Uh, you know, Vernon Town, they're starting to build up some plays. It's not anything concrete, but it's a lot better, Charlie. And I don't know, even know why I speak sometimes, because Trues has the ball. Vernon Town, they don't get close to him, and they, they, that is just magical. Brilliant read. And there's something that's really hard to do at times is not necessarily the, the air dribble into the miss, but the ability to position your car that even when you do miss, you're just stacking the desk to make sure that you're able to get enough of a deflection that'll just go right into the net. So nice little technically triple tap coming in from ASAP Truist, getting their hat trick to start things off and Vernon Township really just trying to get these clears down, get something going. And really, they, I mean, they haven't looked completely absent on offense. They've been able to hit the ball down, be able to uh, challenge the ball, get some 50s, though at times it's just very tough to really hold Richardson back at times when they're moving forward on offense. So definitely feel for Vernon Township. I would not like to be really any team based off against Richardson lately, though that flick at least gives them one shot on the board. A bit of improved. They've actually warmed up this game half run and time, and I didn't really expect that. Piper will get around that one. Credex, another lob over. ASAP Truce, high lob. Trev up for it, though they'll just really go coast to coast, left to right, across the field. Credex, chance to get a flick. Delays a little bit, gets it off the near post. Hyper, no touch, so Showtime. Gonna have to get back on this one. They'll bump Trev a little bit, but not gonna dissuade him. Number five going in with 63 seconds remaining. I will say, though, I thought this was gonna be a lot worse looking, looking into it, especially the first minute. I thought we're interesting we're going to get a lot more goals, but they did. I mean, it's hard to say a team's been defensively strong when they're 5 0 down, but they've been okay at the back half, Vernon Time. I think, I think this is uh, really an avenue where Richardson is a team that I would say we talk about the personalities of these teams and really the, the things that characterize them, their identities. Though the, the personality of Richardson really does feel like the best way to play defense is just to really keep putting up on offense, slowing the play down, being able to get these bumps and whatnot. And they're working into great effect. Lubbock got a little away from them in game number three, but it was more Lubbock really just uh, coming to terms with the way they had to play to counter that play style. And now I think Vernon Township is in the unenviable position of dealing with Richardson maybe organically for the first time and uh, definitely struggling to be able to understand how it's the best way to really approach them. Something nice about Richardson though is it's not just mindlessly attacking and throwing yourselves at it, right? When they need to, they can slow it down and have the ability just to break a really strong defense down. And I think that is something you need in a team that is so aggressive. And Richardson are a team that's definitely impressed with that sort of mindset. And throughout group play, you have several teams trying to uh, make sure that they are uh, getting into the matches, making sure they are playing to their full stability. And you typically have a team that tends to be the standout. I think Summit High School looked very nice in their win first game on this uh, day. But I think Richardson is bringing a very interesting style in that you mentioned. They're not just mindlessly attacking. It all feels very methodical. And not only are they playing smart, they're looking for each other, but they're doing it so quickly. And it's really, I think, throwing a lot of these teams off balance. I think that's a very important thing, not only in a competitor in general, but in the national championships, that's exactly the play style you need to play fast, but also intelligently. It's a good thing to see, and they're not letting down their guard. 5-0 here in game number one. They're on the right path, and they just got to continue trying to throw things forward. And it's on Vernon Township to really come up with a way to at least try to slow that play style down. Difficult for Vernon Town to become, come up with any answer, really, because it is hard to come up with an answer to how good Richardson have been. I'm just so excited for the next matchup between Richardson and Summit because Lubbock played against Summit with a really aggressive style and took the lead in that series and Summit were able to slow them down. It's going to be interesting to see if the same fault process at the same play style will come into effect against Richardson. But Richardson, in my opinion right now, the way they're playing, they're a little bit of a different class, right? They are very strong. They are very intelligent and they are very aggressive. So that next matchup is going to be interesting. 
I just want to see Varane's Hall just hold strong for a bit, maybe get a goal in this series. I think that would be an optimistic uh, reach for them, and I think that's something they should look at. Yeah, they're they're going to get a little bit of time as uh, unfortunately I believe Richardson has lost a player temporarily. So as we're just uh, slowing down to get them back, we'll see how quickly we can get them in. It's it's a time that really I think uh, admins and coaches need to be able to sit down with their players, understand, catch their breath, understand that this is going to be a very interesting series. Richardson playing very strong and being able to refocus themselves. I think uh, the Vernon Township they actually were not devoid of chances. They in a game like that where you see score lines like that. You might just think that they're really like left in the dust, but Cardax had a couple uh, opportunities to hit the ball down the field. I actually saw um, Showtime able to potentially get some shots or get some flicks off, and they just barely didn't uh, get around it. So I'm not necessarily saying that if they made those, this game is entirely different, but it's showing that the opportunities are there. They're just very sparse, and therefore execution has to be really top of the list of priority, of course, behind defensive structure and just trying to slow down that Richardson attack. And of course, you know, let's let's put the possibility out of Vernon Town, you know, maybe sneaking again in a series. I don't think they'll win the series. I think that that's pretty confident to so say that that won't happen, right? Um but seeing a game in this series, if they said if defensively so and have a couple of good fifties go their way and maybe have a chance, then of course they can maybe nick a goal. Once you nick a goal and there, there's a chance that you win that game. So as long as they're defensively solid, Vernon and Town, they give themselves an opportunity. And we'll see if their communication and just their overall mechanics gives them a, an option to do that. Yeah, and uh, right now it seems as though we are running into a bit of a reconnection issue. So uh, we'll throw you to a brief intermission as we try to get these players back in the lobby. We'll be right back with game number two of Richardson High School and Vernon Township. <laughs> Burning the bridge that keeps us I'm here and I'm feeling Exaggerated, that's what you assume The story's over now, I must conclude I am conflicted, watching where I step still Hanging in the balance, not the life I want to live I want to take it all, standing tall Fear I wait the person you are Oh Welcome back, everyone. Sorry about that. We do have everyone back in the lobby, so we're going to be moving on. However, Yidikin actually being subbed out here for a different player for Richardson. So a little bit of a roster change. I don't know how much that's going to affect him. We'll have to see really uh, the cohesiveness with uh, the substitute player. But Vernon Township, uh, a little bit against it. Game one didn't go their way, but into game number two, we'll see what's going to be on the table. Concern for this game with having to have a sub, but later on, they've got so much momentum with the current 
brought to a free that they had, right? That, that tough game over Lubbock where they edged out a, a game where they made sure that they secured the 3 0. They had so much synergy with that, and then Chai Summit next. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to bother them at the moment, but the next game is against a very strong Summit song. Yeah, it's tough showtime, and Piper just trying to get on the end of Crudex is clear. Crudex barely had enough boost to get to that, so unfortunately, it's going to tap that down, and then we're going to be getting an early goal for Richardson. So as you mentioned, yeah, that sub suit should not necessarily hurting them, especially with air dribbles like that. The back post ASAP not able to get one of those uh, signature triple taps on this one. Uh, Crudex with a flick downfield. It's a bounce into Hyper. Gets a deflection. Showtime. A little bit too far away. They're going to have to gather some boost. They will commit to that one. It's just a lob over Crooked. Looking for this one. Oh, Crudex will use their own crossbar. Bold defensive play if I've ever seen one, but will work out. And also with the deflection, gets a tap down. Showtime, quick turn, but force play, no touch there. Hyper turn around on their own back line. Gets the clear, but unfortunately, ASAP read that like a book, and that's a dunk for 2-0. Trace has done that twice. I mean, ASAP Trace has done that twice tonight, where they, they made sure they've got in the way of a clear, they've got to go all out of it. So Trace is definitely good at those sort of reads. And signs of slowing down here from Richardson. That's a good sign for any Richardson fans. And they're seemingly going to try to keep it up as another tap from ASAP is just going to roll around. Prodex, it's another chance to get a flick. And it, it seems like Richardson is actually, in a way, kind of like letting their guard down. They're letting the ball come at them. I can't say it's a bad strategy because they're just going to hard counter on the next one. Trev will just get a roller for the third. Talking about high. The Vikings, ETHS needed to be defensively solid. Well, they have not been defensively solid at all. They can see three inside a minute and 15 seconds. I know it's against a very aggressive and a very creative and a very intelligent, strong side in Richardson, but this is embarrassing at this point. Well, it's, it's so difficult because when a team like Richardson gets on a flow, everything is going their way like this touch by Crudex, it's not ideal it goes out into the middle but it's one thing to set up a shot it's another one just have a smack right back at you Richardson, i mean there's feeling yourself and playing confident and then they're shooting a hundred percent right now from the field that's the efficiency of the highest order which didn't really try and do close the series out try to get themselves on to match point and Vernon Township is trying to really get something on the board. I think Crudex is a great avenue forward for them. He's getting a lot of nice touches and be able to advance close shots like this one, but it's just not enough and the accuracy is just not always there. Crudex is a player of the impressive though. Like, yeah, they've been bombarded at the back so many times, but Crudex has been able to keep cool under pressure and make some really nice touches. I think Crudex is on a different team. We might be talking about them as a really good star player for a roster. They are a star player on this team, but they, they haven't been able to extract enough value out of Crudex to even score a goal in this series. Well, the Rocket League is, uh, it's only three players aside, but it's just so crucial that everyone works together seamlessly. And right now, Vernon Township, is struggling to get those passes together, make sure these plays are hanging together, as right here, all three of Richardson will be together for this one. And it was just a little too late from Hyper. Showtime will be waiting back for this touch. They'll choose to play for the save, but unfortunately, they don't have the angle, number five for Richardson. And again, Richardson just not showing signs of slowing down. They want to run up the score. They want to boost that morale. Nice goal as well for, for Trev. That's not an easy angle. It's a good finish as well. You could maybe argue that one of the players on VTHS should have got there, but it's a nice shot nonetheless, and not many players would have saved that. No, it's a, it's a fantastic shot off of the power shot, right off the bounce, and great way to hit it. So, if anything, Richardson really giving the viewers at home a nice clinic on really efficient scoring practices. And Vernon Township is trying to take note here with some longer hits. Unfortunately, that's not going in. Showtime to the back post is decent, but will be cleared all the way back down. The final two minutes is really just Richardson trying to uh, continue the momentum they're going for as they'll pass another one out into the middle. No touch from a teammate. Prodex will get a high flick, get some frustration out with the demo. And always nice to be able to get some aggressive payback there, some online cyberbullying in the form of clearing a player off, though. So, 
Showtime and company trying to tap that ball forward, but just another clear down by Richardson and it's uh, just a very clean day at the shop here for Richardson. That's actually going to be the first shot they're going to miss, but ultimately will still result in a goal. Is that kind of a missed shot in, on, the, on the Rocket League score? I mean, you're the one that, um, that has the stats board there. Is that kind of a missed shot? Hey, it, 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 if it gets on target and it hits any part of the frame, it's usually counted as a goal. So that was uh, going to count. But Richardson, regardless, I mean, they're shooting 75% right now. I mean, it, it shows that they're not just tapping the ball forward and just screwing around, that they're actually just uh, not slowing down whatsoever. And I really like that approach for the reasons that I mentioned before, that you don't want to, uh, if you, even if you feel like you're outpacing a team, you don't want to slow down. I think right now it's getting a little bit gratuitous. I don't know if that miss was on purpose, as Trev will put that one wide. Uh, but with uh, 60 seconds remaining, they have the lead in hand. I mean, you could play for possession, but it really doesn't seem like that's what they're interested in. They're really just uh, throwing it forward and they're trying to get as many goals on the board as they can. And they could play for possession and they'll still win this game. But I like the idea of Richardson just keep going, keep going, keep the tempo high. I mean, they'll feel a little bit loose. They'll feel bad for themselves for continuing that goal. Kodak's doing great to get in there and get that goal one. That's a nice little thing for VTHS, right? You know, they, at least you got a goal out of this very difficult match at the National Championships, right? Nice goal as well. Well done, Kodak. And see if they can uh, maybe get another one for a little take-home container on the way out of game number two as they're advancing down and we'll get a nice pass showtime is there but Trev's a little bit closer Prodex will throw it into the middle again though the retreat will buy him a little bit of time dunk over will roll all the way down the line asap will not be able to get that boost steal but they're just gonna go across and get a little bump on hyper and then rotate out as uh now we're starting to slow down a little bit they're still looking for goals they want the brazil and they will get one with 13 seconds remaining so maybe that was the master plan all along it's fine if we give one up if anything they're just setting up the inevitable meme okay yeah my actually explanation as to why they conceded although it was a pretty good goal from Crodex, but mm -hmm. you know why they they get to have a nice laugh with each other they've got the brazil difficult times for vths but, but now i think we can kind of look towards later in the day vths they'll have a game against summit as will richardson and that's going to be interesting for me richardson you've got to keep the pace high and make sure that they're warmed up and ready to go for that summit match yeah, especially since uh, when we're looking at the schedule here, um, it's going to have to be uh, the next match on. So this is really their warm up for that match. And um, it's nice to see that they are uh, not slowing down. They're getting a lot of shots off and Vernon Township. I mean, going forward with this match, I think at this point, I mean, they understand that they're a bit overmatched here. Something really huge is going to have to change. But to be honest, it's just not enough. It's it's Richardson is very strong. They're making a statement for why they want to move on, advance from this group. They're just uh, a bit too fast over the top. And I think they're showing it off to the point where that um, they're even going for more creative stuff. They're slowing down the play. They're going for some weird reads and uh, it's encouraging to see. It's uh, definitely, um, I, I would I would hate to be Summit watching this game from the sidelines and actually being able to, having to prep for this match is certainly quite oh, an interesting thing, but off the kickoff, Credex gonna give Vernon Township the lead. Oh, Trav just based it off the kickoff, and it was, I think it was put in there. I don't think that was on target. It was just put in by Richardson. I mean, that's a bit of a confidence booster for Vikings. I mean, what they could do now is see if they really are defensively solid, maybe win a 50, and maybe get another lucky goal, and maybe a game isn't out of reach, but I would see that as unlikely. I mean, it's going to have to be an incredibly strong four minutes here from the squad and they're going to be able to hold on just enough but unfortunately that miss undoes them. Trev does not miss from there. 1-1 one, one, the first 20 seconds. Yeah, Trev may have missed that kickoff but he did not miss that opportunity. Good goal. 1-1. One, one, 20 seconds in and I think Regis and I they're going to want to open the floodgates again. Make sure they keep their tempo because I cannot stress how important that next game is. Why? Because if, if you lose that game and you go through a second seed you're potentially playing a team like Huntington in the next round, right? And that will be a very difficult match. Whereas you go for his first seed, you're, you're playing a lesser team in the next round. So that next game versus Summit is going to be so critical. Yeah, and even in this game, I mean, 
as, as much as we say it's it's unlikely, I have seen plenty of matches where a team has been incredibly dominant and then they slow down a little bit and then they just don't get enough goals and then something weird happens. I don't know if that's on the books. I think Vern Touch of has struggled and with touches like that, it's going to be even tougher, though that is a miss. Showtime coming across. That's a miss by Trev. Trevex on the back end of this one will have to deal with an ASAP truce, a back pass, but uh, at least for right now, a little bit of a clunker first goal. Give it up to Vernon, and right now, uh, it seems like Richardson kind of just throwing the ball away. Gonna have to keep the clears fine. They did get bumped action in the backfield, so good time and Crudex will be able to combine for another hit up field. But it's uh, certainly, I would say, the most unique beginning to a game we've seen them today. But messy, no, I feel like they, they oh. need to clean it up for the next series, but I mean, hey, that, that's a nice. That's a nice goal for you, right? Right off your own wall, right into the, into the goal you score. Brilliant, right? I mean, that's the farthest distance you can basically score from. A nice goal to get, your, get yourselves back in the league, get comfortable, but I still think that that, that that little bit of period, that little minute period where it's been a bit messy, that might cost them for a little bit. And unfortunately, that ball will roll to the back post and we'll get another goal from Crooked Blazekin. So it just these spurts of really competitive nature that we're getting out of Vernon Township where they have these moments where they have a shot on target or they're able to force an awkward save. But it really shows that at this level, you have to really keep that level at a peak throughout the entire match. It's really what Richardson has uh, really failed to do for the first time. And you see Vernon Township really claw their way back into the series, make it a little bit closer. And now that Richardson, I think, has turned that faucet back on, is able to play with more speed, make sure they're not missing any touches. It's right back to really what we saw in game one and two. It's uh, the Vernon Township players on the back foot dealing with a lot of pressure. And it's just a bit too much. ASAP True is going to dunk that one in. Floodgates are well and truly open now, right? And this is just going to be how many goals can Richardson score? I mean, the nice thing for the Vikings is they've scored two goals in this series, probably more than they were expected to. Like, honestly, I know that's harsh to say, but they are at a bit of a mismatch here. And they, they can take confidence in that at times. They've been defensively solid, but for Richardson now, it's keeping the tempo up, keeping themselves warm, and scoring as many goals as possible. Absolutely, and we'll see. Another advance forward, and ASAP Truce will take it to the air this time, just going left to right. Trev will chase them down and tap the ball up the line. Crudex, right into ASAP, right back into Crudex, and another flick down to the corner. Fortunately, he will get demoed, so physical play returning for Richardson. We've crossed half time, so we can see the outcome of this one as uh, we'll see another attack go through, and that left, <laughs> that left side of the post is getting absolutely abused. Crudex will ultimately get that clear and be able to advance this one down the field. And I really do think that uh, Richardson, I, I think if their mentality really, this game is the first time I saw it slip a bit. In the beginning of this game, of course, now 5-1, that goal. Uh, we keep going back to that, but I think it's so important because uh, not to be too dismissive, Richardson has this game. They're playing well. This will complete their sweep. And going up against Summit, I don't think they really can afford those matches where they take a break off and they play a little bit more goofy. They need to be able to bring it from start to finish. You see, even against a team like Vernon Township, which has struggled uh, to get too many shots on target, they were able to take a lead and actually hold a tie game for about 90 full seconds. So it's, it's a very difficult situation for these teams that uh, even against uh, the team that uh, might not be the most successful in the groups. It still requires at least a fair amount of focus. Yeah, and it has been messy at times. It's been a couple of double commits uh, from Richardson. And, and all this nine is building up to that. Are they going to be messy in that game? How are the play styles going to clash? Because we know some have played a slower style, played a lot of great patterns against Lubbock, and ultimately played a really good series, right? And I would say, personally, that I know it was Summit 32 against Lubbock, but I would personally say that the series between Summit and Lubbock, I would say Summit were a lot better than Richardson were against Lubbock, despite the score lines. Yeah, and it, I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to work out as well, as we're really just playing a little bit of a rope and dope, and Ball's just traveling around, taking laps around the field as Ball will just go left and right. But it's um, certainly something to be said about uh, really, Richardson just uh, keeping themselves warm. They're even looking to get into passing plays. That'll be the hat trick for Trev. 
uh, really, I mean, we don't keep stats within the National uh, Championship, but uh, Richardson, I don't know if they got the memo. I think this is really the definition of stat padding at this point. Yeah, um, they're on the way down to Brazil if they can get it. You know, it's 6-1, 45 seconds, it's definitely doable. It's really the only stat that matters, is is how many times have you gotten to Brazil in the group stage. Yeah, or, or at all, in life. You know? <laughs> and, yeah, I don't know if we keep life stats. We'll, we'll get back to you on that. We'll have to talk to the admin on EGF, but, you know, that's another hire. You got to hire the stats team, a, spe a specific person for that. It, I'm sure that's a logistical nightmare. So that's a concern for another day. At least the concern right now is just closing out this game. Richardson is going to be taking this 3-0. They will be advancing on maybe with a second Brazil. What a <laughs> double tap by <laughs> ASAP to seal that one. And, uh, they're closing the series out in style. Yeah, you, you, you can clip that and, and put a link to it if you like have like an online CV resume, right? That that's going in the online resume, right there. But second Brazil, beautiful pull off the backboard, nicely done by Trey. And, and, and nicely done in general by the Richardson squad. That ball is going to hit down right after Crudex. They gave it one more college try or high school tries, I should say, as uh, Richardson will close this one out. Clean 3-0 sweep, and they're moving on with 2-0 in the group stage. Looking great, but really, as we mentioned, biggest struggle is still up ahead, and Vernon Township will have to wait until last match of the day to see if they can get a win on the board. Yeah, absolutely. But Richardson, confidence-wise, you're going to be gleaming. Two Brazilians in a row, a couple really nice scores. I'm excited for the next game. I'm excited to get uh, some Richardson thoughts on the next game. I don't know if they know how Lubbock's game versus Summit went, for example. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what their view is going into the next matchup. Yeah, and we'll we'll try to see if we can pick their brain a little bit. We will throw you guys to a brief break. We'll be right back with a member of Richardson High School and see what they think going forward here in the 2021 EGF High School National Championships. <laughs> Take me away from home Show me all the places I've never known And we'll chase the night Race all of these broken dreams in flight And we'll fly i 
Welcome back, everybody, to the 2021 EGF High School National Championships. We just saw Richardson play their second game on stream and get a nice win. Another sweep here. We have the Richardson team on the line. And uh, how are you guys feeling after that next game and about to go into your third and final group stage match? Uh, we're feeling great. We just had to uh, drop a player for some issues. But, I mean, we have a we have a strong sub. We are feeling confident in our abilities right now. We're kind of just getting back into the group after not really playing games for a while. We've been practicing on our own. Uh, we've been keeping up our, our rigor, so I think that that's going to pay off in this next game. Awesome to hear. Now, your next game it is actually quite important. It's against a team called Summit who beat uh, Lubbock in the first game with the die. And both of your, your, these teams, yourself and Summit, are expected to go through this group. They're both very strong teams. How do you prepare for a team that you know is going to be quite strong? Could you repeat that last part? Uh, how do you prepare for a team that's going to be strong, uh, maybe even stronger than you? Um, honestly, I, I think it really comes down to the game situation. But preparation, we've done all we can do on our part. So it really just comes down to how we perform in the game. And I have like, a, a really I have a high confidence in my team. I feel that we could pull through. And this is just like any other team. So although they're uh, a difficult team, I feel that our team could pull through with how much we prepared and how we've been performing throughout this tournament so far. And we're actually seeing you guys go through pretty cleanly. And with this win, you would uh, certainly secure your number one spot within your group. And I mean, you're talking about all this preparation you're putting in uh, very briefly. We caught a glimpse of actually where you guys are playing. I don't believe you guys are playing in your bedrooms. Are you in a facility where where is the Richardson team uh, conducting all these games from? Yeah, we uh, so we do have two members right now. We uh, we have a gaming cafe near our location where we live. So we just actually came here just for uh security issues like uh like just to have a secure internet connection and just to have that little bit of advantage because i am a player that uh plays on console and this is asap true speaking my teammate trev is uh my teammate trev and yidikin are the only people who have a pc so i came here for this just that little difference and hopefully it's paying off and i feel like it is paying off so we uh two of our members which is, which are uh trevor and uh asap truce are here in this gaming cafe playing today that's nice. That's that's actually awesome to hear. And um, you know, 
you all be playing extremely well. Good luck in your next game, and hopefully it's going to be a good one. It will. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sitting down with us. That was Richardson High School again. ASAP Truce trying to close out the group stage. We'll be throwing you guys to a brief break as we set up the next match. It will be Richardson yet again facing off against Summit High School, deciding who's going to come out on top, potentially of Group 5 here. in Group stage play of the 2021 EGF High School National Championship. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. These expectations, they keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm gonna live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. And if I say it enough, it gets in.
Welcome back, everyone, to some more 2021 EGF High School National Championships. We have seen Richardson play a lot of games so far, and they got one more to go against arguably the most important opponent here. We have Summit High School returning to the stream. They were our first match on stream. They had to wait a bit, but they are back. And this is really a match, Ocean, that we have seen that could decide this uh, how this group really shakes out. Right. Summit in the first game. Of today, it's the only game we've seen them on stream so far against Lubbock. A 3-2 win, but they were quite convincing in that 3-2 win. They were very methodical. They made some really good passing plays. And they're coming up against a very aggressive and, and very awesome to watch Richardson team that just attack, 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 attack. They are absolutely relentless. They're very intelligent with their attacks as well. So it's just mindlessly hitting the ball forward and then going aggressive. It's very intelligent attacks. And we'll see how they're able to deal with this. And we'll kick off into game number one to see just how group five will shake out. As we've seen a roof, actually the player that I think to me that stood out in that first series for Summit, getting a lot of nice redirects, keeping the ball in interesting positions. But really, I mean, it's hard to single out one player. The good thing about teams like Richardson and Summit is that they do work cohesively. There is not really a standout player at times. It's really just them all working well together, getting shots off. More importantly, being able to convert chances consistently. And, we're gonna see that kind of a, I can't really say classic, we've only seen them once, but Summit High School with that nice possession play yet again with a soft catch, but go right back to Trev and a little bit of back pass of their own, we'll go back out to midfield. I can I put the ball wide to the side, that's where they're most comfortable and then they're trying to bring the ball into that danger area. But Trev seems to have read that a couple of times already, he's already got onto those sidewalls and cleared the ball back into the Summit half, so they might have to change the game plan just a little bit. Bromsby getting some great aerial speed there. They're going to keep the ball dangerous. ASAP is going to have to reach around the side of the goal to be able to tap that into open space. Gets another flick to go. Ruby, third player back, hits that to the back post. Bromsby lurking, but also has to pay attention to ASAP. It's going to take him around at Trev on the air dribble. It's past one, not past Jonesy. Another nice clear down and Summit really trying to push the issue put the ball in interesting positions it's a miss by a couple but not by bromsby and that's gonna be the opener for summit go off the side wall jonesy's there puts it in. it's a nice passing play i'm not sure what he meant to make a miss though there was a fake and then it comes right in the bronze position I, I would be very surprised if it was but it ended up really nice for summit and they take the lead in this series we're expecting it to be extremely tight but summit have looked really good at the start of this yeah, they seem to have an answer to everything. And maybe even a second goal. That one's not going in. Rufy doesn't have the tap either. It's going to go out into the blue corner. And uh, I mean, the avenue that we haven't been anticipating is that Richardson has looked very impressive. But also, they are playing with a sub. So potentially, without Yedekin on the lineup, they might have to be adjusting to a player they might not have as much experience with. It certainly looks like they are still able to get some shots off as a save will go off the crossbar. But that is a factor for Richardson that they might have taken into account. Summit is uh, playing with three starters, whereas Richardson is uh, not really matching them in that sense. Absolutely, but now Summit, they've got another chance, this time on the left-hand side. They're a little bit slow to the ball, but now Jones, he's going to build this attack back up. It's good to see them returning to these touches. They have to make sure they're consistent, though. That's a couple misses in the near post, really, from both sides, though. So Rufi, taking that to the side. No pinch up field, but they'll slow play it down. ASAP, kind of flipping in place, and every single player on Richardson really just swarming the ball, just trying to get any touch on it. And they'll ultimately just yield a slower clear. Jonesy will hit that one down, be a little wide, get a boost steal, they rotate out. Come to them in the middle again, only hits off the backboard. Ruby and Jonesy lurking around the backwards aerial, it's gonna ricochet off the ceiling, and a clear down the line could start a fast break for ASAP. They're gonna get cut that out. Trev, open shot. They put that well over straight down. Bromsby, and they almost hit it into the far post, but it will go just wide. 
And Jonesy will be able to counter. So back and forth we go, but still only one goal in at Summit High School, holding on to a fairly tenuous one goal lead. Bromsby, all of them making it too, but a denial. I think that's the late call for Bromsby to go for that ball. I'm not sure if it was right, but Rayfield's in a really good position at the back post. Trev now trying to build up something. And I think Richardson are just slowly coming back into this, but they haven't been able to play as aggressively as they might want to. But Bromsby is yet again there. That's the second goal off four shots, but it's really a play that Richardson does not have the clear they wanted to, and Crooked was not there to react in time. Summit just getting a little bit quicker on it. Only five shots, but the flow of play certainly has been going in their direction for a lot of this game one. And, uh, you know, you have to say that Richardson at the back, defensively, they, they, they look a little uncomfortable, right? They haven't had to defend too much. In their games, they had to defend a little bit against Lubbock, but that was a little bit of a tired Lubbock roster, and maybe now Richardson are getting tired themselves, right? They've not played three games in a row, and so they've had a nice break, they're coming right back into this, and they've started off very strong. Ooh, and Richardson, in an attempt to get their first goal of the series, is gonna rattle that one off the bar. Bronze with a long clear, Trev called into action. Will be able to get that to the sideline and extend it further. Rupee takes that away from Bronze, but good control and a decent flick. ASAP, cutting that one down, Crooked. Taking their time, gets a good deflection. Trev will have it open, maybe for a double tap. It's a little bit over, they bail on that one. ASAP doesn't, but that is another denial to the side. Under 40 seconds to go, Summit is still enjoying that two goal lead, and Richardson just getting stifled at every advance. When a team like Summit actually makes a defensive play, they're trying to get it out to the side at every single cost. And that slows Richardson down, and they do not want to be slowed down. They like to play aggressive, they like to play a fast tempo, and they just aren't able to right now. It really feels like the transition game is not there for Richardson, and Summit is suffocating them in their half at times just by getting consistent touches on the backboard. And Richardson, this is the most hemmed in I've seen them all day long, and they're not even going to get one for consolation. <laughs> Summit High School, clean sheet to start off the series, and they're going to take game number one. And that was really strong. And uh, honestly, Bromsby was a player that we didn't really talk too much about in, in their first series against Lubbock. And they were the player that got the two goals, right? But when we talk about a team like Summit High School, it's usually just the teamwork that they have. The teamwork that they have to play has been terrific. In both series, we've seen them on string. The question is, can they keep it up? Because I think the second you start to play a little bit lazy or you something go, doesn't go right. As soon as this Richardson team gets some momentum to play aggressive and keep going, then you might be in a little bit of trouble if you're Summit. So you've got to keep this up. You've got to stay defensively strong and you've got to keep playing these slow passes and making sure you get those key chances that you really need to keep scoring. Yeah, and I think we haven't really seen, I would say, Richardson be frustrated yet and get into a situation where they're kind of just throwing themselves at it. I think we started to see shades down the stretch there as once Summit got that first goal or a first goal, Richardson started to extend a little bit. Then they got the second goal down and then we started to see actually just full breakaways. Third man really just committing fully up the field, getting beat over the top. So Richardson has to keep their cool going into game number two. They're still in the series and it wasn't a complete blowout, but Summit certainly looking strong to start things off as Bromsey will right off the kickoff as an open flick though. Not able to get that one to go and it's gonna have to retreat and play defense. Summit win this game, they will go through to the next stage, right? So this is important for Summit. I mean, they probably will go for it anyway because they play um, BTHS Vikings after this and they've been very unconvincing. So Summit, you know, they're, they're mainly fighting for the first seed with this Richardson team. This game has a lot of volume. And they're certainly playing like it, trying to make sure every touch is there, but still some nerves, some misses coming through, just trying to get too fine of a touch. Gonzi will get a lot on this one and be able to advance it. Actually, the near post was open. Trev almost didn't get back on this one. Another roller out into midfield. Bromsby, what a pass to Ruby, but maybe didn't anticipate that coming at that angle. Passing to Trev, will keep it high, crooked. Decides against it, Bromsby will play for possession in the corner. And I think that's the one thing I've seen from Summit that no other team can uh, really emulate, that back pass just to keep possession. It's such a confident play to understand where everyone is, understand where your teammates are, and not just to throw the ball away. It's, it's something that I think has worked very well for against Summit. And right now, Richardson just doesn't have the answer. Jonesy almost stealing that one on the dunk, but the post's gonna deny him. 
Yeah, I really like this summit scene. They're always starting to create a little bit more chances. I think they need to get the list ball annoying to try and just keep the pressure on, but starting to get a little bit loose now, and I think that's how Richardson will like it. Okay, yeah, well, ASAP, he's going to get an air dribble over two for the opener in game number two. Doing it with style. He had a nice double tap in the last series, and this is showing off the mechanics again. Brilliant control. Yeah, I, I think Richardson needed that. As soon as the ball got loose, as soon as the pace of the game got a little bit out of control, Richardson looked a lot stronger. Because they've got players like Truce who can just show off their mechanics, show off their skill and create goals like that, make goals like that happen, right? That sort of fast-paced, loose style will suit them. So they've got to keep the game controlled somehow, otherwise it will become difficult. But when it's controlled like it was the entirety of the last game in this series, they, were look, they look really strong. And they have the lead, though they did look a little bit ragged on defense at times last game. So I think for me, Richardson, even though having that lead, it's more important about how they handle the defensive responsibilities of this game. And at least for right now, they're doing fairly well, though Summit a little bit scattered. They're going to have one more chance here with Jonesy. Taps it on, crooked. Not the cleanest clear. Ruby taps it across from speed just too far away, but actually gets a pinch for a pass in the middle, and Jonesy gonna bury that one. Sure how that ball comes in. It, it, it's just a really nice pinch off the wall, isn't it? And Jonesy's just in the right place at the right time. I'm not sure the two players on the line there were expecting that from Richardson, but Jonesy was the player quickest to react. It's 1-1 now. I'm watching from fly camp. I didn't, can't believe that Brownsby actually got around that. And not only that, but to perfectly lob that in the middle. Credit to Jonesy to be able to crash the goal, put that one in. Great way to equalize right at the stroke of half time. And it's exactly what I was a little bit worried about from Richardson, just making sure that you are alert enough to get on top of those balls. But then as I say that, Ruby takes a little bit too much and Crooked's going to dump one in. They thought they had a little bit more time than they did. And look, they tried to take a touch and then, oops. That's a goal. I mean, if they knew they had not as much time, they probably would have just put it to the side and then tried to take it up the wall. That's probably what Ruthie would have done there. But a miscommunication or just not enough awareness is what led to that goal. Yeah, and, and that can be so tough when you deal about the macro of Rocket League with the touches that you need to do, the rotations you need to have, but then even the micro decisions, just the ability to take that dribble inside instead of outside, and then the 50 comes in and it goes straight in. It's just something you don't really keep in mind. It's be so alert during this game, and especially now, Summit have to be on full alert. So uh, They've lost their... Uh, really, they claimed that tie, and they're gonna have to fight back to be able to get back in this game. And speaking of miscommunication, Trev and Crooked not getting any touch on it. I'm not sure what will happen here. I think it's probably a late call from Crooked to say, I can't get there. Uh, Trev has made a fairly lackadaisical attempt to get to it, and now we're back at 2 2. Two little moments where there's little laps of the concentration with Richardson at the back, and it's 2 2. So Richardson is getting back in these games. They're certainly not shut out, but they're not in the lead either. We're just going to be tied out here and final 90 seconds. I'm curious to see if we will have to go to overtime to separate these two teams. That was the case in Summit versus Lubbock. And I, this is definitely very interesting to see from Summit because they are the first team so far that has made Richardson so uncomfortable. And this backboard is a theme I've seen return to over and over for Summit is that Richardson just doesn't have anyone on the backboard and they're gonna get punished sooner or later. Bromsby absolutely rattles one off of the post. 60 seconds remaining, Summit still looking strong, but the accuracy just plaguing them down the stretch some of these games. Bromsby should have scored that one. Maybe just the pressure of seeing the goal there has, has taken that one away from them. Being so critical though, the rest of this series, and it doesn't seem to have been any of that beautiful, beautiful summer one. No. Jones wrapping this a run around it, and it kind of cut that one back. Trev wasn't fooled, able to get that tap and a clear upfield. But in a way, this is actually a great example of what thing we were applauding Richardson for. They're not throwing the ball away, but now it seems like they're just in a state where they just want the ball out of their half. They're throwing it forward and they don't have a follow. It's a very unusual state to see them in. And granted, we're, they're not being punished necessarily. It's 20 seconds remaining, but it's, it's very uncharacteristic. You can see the effect that Summit is having on them. They're getting to the ball a little bit quicker and they might not be ready. Final seconds though, a great pass from Ruby, cut out just in time by ASAP. They're gonna get maybe one more chance. Rupi 
Putting it high off the backboard. Jonesy is there off the backboard again, but Bromsey doesn't want to risk that one. We will indeed be going to overtime in game number two to separate these two squads. It'd be hard to say who was playing better there in, in, in the last half of that, the five minute time we had. It, was, it would be Summit, right? Because Summit were creating a lot of chances. They just lacked that little bit of coolness under pressure to make sure they got those goals. Of course, that last hit off the back wall, you know, just too much on it. And ASAP almost forced an interesting play here. So almost being able to end prematurely. That, I think that was a bump clear from Jones. He forces up ASAP. Trev is going to try to come across this as Rufy hitting that across. It's a blazing shot on target, but Crooked gets a good save. Rufy keeps it alive again. A roller across the middle. That's just going to be a tap forward. Jonesy will only be able to hit that forward, so passing play forward. Trev to ASAP. And unfortunately, ASAP just a bit too far away. And we're going to see another clear as everyone retreats back, gets some boost and a little bit of calm. That's what some overtimes are like. You just have bouts of back and forth. And then this calm period where both teams have to settle in and make sure they reconsolidate their position. Aside exactly where some like you, they're going to try and put another full win. And Richardson, they're not looking convincing on the defense here. You're going to have to be very careful. Bromsby, that is on target. Doesn't have a convincing power, but it's enough to make Richardson tap that one to the side. Now Trev on the far side gets a flick, beats out Jonesy. Two players committed. This could be a fast break. Jonesy, they have Bromsby kind of lurking in the middle. He gets a 50. That's an open net potentially in the near post. So it's going to ramp up and over Rufy behind in the backfield. Waiting for a tap out. Could be one of them, but Jonesy will call him off. Unfortunately, the tap not quite what they want. And the touches are a little bit less convincing, but some of them, they only need one like that from Bromsby. Great goal line save. <laughs> We're going to keep on playing. And Richardson's goal line defense just barely hanging on. I didn't even see who made that save. I think it was Trav coming across from the far side. He probably had no idea where that was going, but it's still a hero, hero heroic save. I'm losing my words here. Unfortunately, these touches just going over the bar. That's again, a couple shots here. Ruby, one more chance. He's just too quick. Summit taking another game and they will move on to match point after some overtime heroics from Ruby. Told you. There's Summit's play. In that first game against Lovett when they lost three, or say the one three two in five, five games. Something told me that they were in control. Something told me they are a team to be reckoned with. And they most certainly are. This has been a terrific performance. To be that cool under pressure in overtime, they didn't really look like they were going to lose that, that game in this series at any point. They're 2-0 up. They just need to get to the end. I think this is something that I really love from Summit because they did look like, I would say, the better team against Lubbock. And not, Lubbock is certainly a team that is in the mix. They deserve to be in this national championship. They're playing well. But they did struggle. They took them to game five, but they did end up losing. And from that, I saw Summit, you looked good, but I'm not quite convinced. I am very convinced right now. Richardson has been playing phenomenally throughout today, and they are really up against it right now. Summit doesn't, uh, not only is getting shots off, but they feel like there's times where Richardson is just all in their goal line, desperately trying to lock down, park the bus. And even then, it's still hard to break out. It's seeing them panic. It's seeing them clear. It's a very interesting thing. Something needs to change very quickly for Richardson. They are on their last life here, facing potentially a sweep against Summit which is the best possible result for Summit as uh, they were uh, looking to take down the other Titan in this group. Honestly, when it, when it comes to Richardson and how they get back into this, I, I, I'm unsure. I think they just need more, maybe a bit of luck in, in a sense, and also just more of that individual quality that we know they have. Those little moments of brilliance that get them balls like that. That's absolutely brilliant here. Just a two person passing player. Trev, not it on target, but lobs it just high enough. Still a lot of work to do, but does ASAP Drews do it well? Getting not only a clean contact, but right down the middle. 1011 seconds, and that's a way to start your potentially your final match on stream if it doesn't go well. There we go. See, trying to get them right back into this series. It bunches off where they. Wow. Oh, no. Oh no, that is a lot of confusion across the goal. ASAP Tris was going up. I think he was playing the block from Rufy, but then his momentum took it in and went past the defender. 
I don't care who you are. That is painful to watch. You have to feel for the player. And after getting such a fantastic goal on the board, unfortunately, he will turn the unintentional villain and we're all tied up. Forget the significance of that, right? This is Team 3, the two titans of the group. You just got yourself into lead into an advantageous position, and now it's snowballing out of control. The mental seems to be gone. They're unable to stay cool, and Summit are now leading this game three. I really think Richardson needs to take every single second between any of these goals, any breaks in play, take a deep breath. I think they're getting a bit too frantic. They've given up some unfortunate goals, but they're off deflections. You can get it back with good passes like that, but ASAP just a bit too far away. The pre-flip can't get the shot. Now Rufy, unobstructed, has a chance at the shot, but not able to convert. So Bromsby brings it back again. ASAP again to the corner, but Jonesy doesn't want to let them out. A good 50 for Rufy, but it will open up a bit as Bromsey will hesitate. ASAP, no touch, and Jonesy, another clear down. So Summit, uh, not content with two goals here. They got their one goal lead, but they keep pressing the issue, and it's just so difficult for them to get out of their half, Richardson. They're just constantly having to defend against these aerials across the backboard. Misses like that really are the reprieve that they need to take advantage of, but their long shot is going to be turned away. We slow against... Lubbock earlier is this summit team is really good defensively. The rotations are usually quite strong. Uh, they made a couple of mistakes in the midfield this game, but every single time they do make a mistake in the midfield, there's still someone there to clean up the action. Still someone there to keep the dream alive. And that is what's so good about this summit team. Their teamwork and how they can get a game plan is so, so good. See ASAP have a lot of space. Not a lot of boost though, but they're gonna use it for a pass. Trev wasn't ready, Ruby was off the ceiling on the pre-flip they don't have it trev and asap double commit and i really have to agree with you the mental just a very strange uncharacteristic misses here asap called into action again on defense and trying to scramble to get these clears bromsey is just going to roll that one forward but ultimately trev <laughs> clears that one across that was actually glanced off the crossbar and out a close shave but it's not going to hurt him half time quickly approaching and summit still with that one goal lead in it these shiffers when the ball came across the goal there. <laughs> I thought that was going to be another disappointing goal, but it isn't. And that means it's still only a one goal advantage. And definitely possible for Richardson to come back into this. My goodness, I was taking a sip of water and trying to really spit it out as he hits that one off the crossbar yet again. But it's a lot of confidence to be able to play defense like that. And with a miss like this, they might be able to open up an opportunity, but Crooked just turning in place, trying to decide whether or not to go. ASAP will. Leave it up to them as they take it off the side. Well, it's a nice flick to the back post. Doesn't have the accuracy. It does not. Trev will put that one off of the right post. Bromsby advancing. They have Rufy with them. They need them to go for the solo flick. Rufy will keep it interesting, but the shot won't go in. And the 50 from Trev will put that one down the sideline. ASAP over the top. Does it get under the bar? It does, and it's going to be deflected despite some last second attempts. ASAP Cruz will tie this one up. And that, that, that's a goal that you really need. And yeah, it kind of came out of nothing. This sort of clearance up fails. Yes, it's on target. And sometimes you need those clearances to be on target because sometimes the rotation might not be right and you'll get a goal out of it. And that's exactly what happened there. And that's exactly what Richardson needed. ASAP off the kickoff almost made a play all by themselves. They didn't have the boost to get over top the shot. So they're going to have to wait for the next foray into the offensive zone with ASAP and Crooked, unfortunately deflecting that one. Trev is going to chase it two players around, but Jonesy's the only one to get to it. ASAP off the sidewall. It's going to be a sitter for Rupi. They actually decide to go for the aerial instead, maybe not realizing the time they had. Trev the one target, a fantastic save required out of Jonesy. And we're going to keep on playing. 75 seconds remaining and ASAP to the aerial, but will be deflected away. And Crooked is going to throw it off the sidewall, but Rupi is there and another little ball out to mid. A little bit messy from Summit though, right? They've been so clean in their, uh, their communication, their rotations, and even just their game plan, but it's starting to get messy ever since that second goal went in. Hopefully, the same Summit team. 
It's, it's certainly a bit more anxious, but Richardson also being very aggressive. Rufy has an open net, but couldn't get there in time. That clear, not ideal. Trev and, uh, and really ASAP are both up for that one. Jonesy a little bit wide. Bromsby gets it in the mix, but another miss. And that clinical finishing that someone was displaying earlier, it isn't as present. A lot of shots going wide, just a little bit over. I think the offensive pressure can speak for itself, but ultimately you got to put something in. Richardson searching for some goals of their own. The demo will try to help out the rotation, but ultimately too far back to be able to take advantage of it. And another ball just going to have to be ricocheted to their sideline and cleared now down into the orange corner. Getting a little bit messed from both teams. A lot of nervous energy. I can sense it. And who can blame them? This is for top C of the group in the EGFH National Championships, right? This isn't just nothing. This is a national competition. This is the national championships. Both teams definitely feeling the brunt of that right now. On top of that, I mean, it's such an ego blow to feel like as though you are the team in this group and then you're playing against the other top team and you're on the verge of getting swept out of all of that. So certainly that's be weighing on the mind of Richardson, but they are in this. They can keep their series alive if they can get this next goal, but easier said than done. They've gotten close, but not quite close enough. Crooked, too slow to this one. Trev keeps alive. Ruby is facing down a three on one. The bounce clear straight down ASAP. Slows it down, tries to get a flick. It's a bit of deflection. Crooked can't get that one, but only safely roll into the corner. So Bromsby, not the catch they're hoping for, but they don't have any pressure. Rufy will tap it by ASAP. Left alone for a little bit. Great catch by Rufy. Good pass to Bromsby, but it's a bit too far. Jonesy will try to keep it alive, but ultimately another deflection. It's going to go down. Summit High School enjoying a fair amount of pressure here in this opening minute of overtime. Oh, oh here we go. There could be another chance, but Truth gets in the way. I actually thought that was going to go points. I saw Jonesy coming in, and I thought that would have been Summit's chance to go in, but no, they're just going to try and build again off that right hand side. Trev, another slow play. Get the high flick. It freezes the defenders. They'll get another touch, but ultimately they're going to have to rotate out. Crooked and ASAP trying to pressure the ball. Bromsby, good 50. Jonesy, quick up for it. That's a miss by both. Rufy passed one. Trev left alone a little bit. Great pass in the middle. Bromsby's there, and they're going to put it away just like that. Summit and Richardson is over. 3-0 sweep by Summit High School. Wow. 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 I can't believe I ever doubted them, to be honest. I, I felt so confident in them after their first game on stream earlier today. The first game we had on their stream earlier today. I felt so confident in them, right? I thought they were going to be the team, the team to beat in this group. But then Richardson came in to all of their games, highly aggressive, just scoring and scoring. And scoring back-to-back -back Brazils in the last game. But Summit just came into this game, played their casual defensive game plan, and other than the last, the last game, the game three, they were scoring their chances, they were creating chances, and they had control over every single match. But what a game to finish us off there. Summit High School. Wow. And, and there has to be a, a huge blow to Richardson being able to cruise through those first two games, but then get dealt a loss. So even though with that game, they are still very likely um, to be able to move on from this group and be able to qualify as top two, it does hurt their seeding. And you had alluded to this earlier on the broadcast, going down a seed means you will probably be playing the top team from a different group in the final bracket this weekend. So certainly some in a way on their minds, but that will be the end of that one. Summit, uh, someone probably getting a 3-0 victory against Richardson for our second to last series. And for our last one, Summit High School will be finishing out their group stage plays against Vernon Township. We'll be throwing you guys to a break, but we'll be back with more 2021 EGF High School National Championship. I want to taste your content, hold your breath and feel the tension. Devil's hide behind you. Redemption, honesty is a one-way gate to hell. I want to taste consumption. It's faster to waste oxygen. Hear the children sing aloud. It's music till the wick burns out.
There's a distance between us It's getting hard to reach out Haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice I know my limits You can break me down but I'll stay till the finish line And I've been counting minutes for quite some time now Just to see you again And I've been counting days to get
everyone to the last match of the group five group stage play here for the 2021 egf high school national championships in collaboration with walt disney world and espn wide world of sports and the wide world of esports at least has seen a lot of turmoil in group five a lot of back and forth and summit high school playing their last game against vernon township after coming off a 3-0 sweep 
against Richardson, a team that had really blown by their competition with two straight sweeps the the series before this. So uh, really, this is for Summit's chance to win and get the number one in the group stage. But they're coming off uh, quite the hot streak here. I've got the numbers for you. If Summit lose this series 3-1 to VTHS, then they will go for it in second place. Seems very unlikely, considering Summit who just 3 0 would Richardson, who in turn Brazil'd VTHS twice. So very unlikely that happens. Even if they lose the Series 3-2, Summit will go through as your number one seed. So it's it's very um, interesting high stakes here, technically for Summit, but ultimately they just have to play their game, make sure they get a win under their belts, or maybe just don't lose too badly, <laughs> and they will be through as number one seed. They've earned this spot, now it's up to Vernon Township to see if they can play. Spoiler here in our last match of the day. We're going to see Bromsey and Prodex start things off with a little bit of hit to the sideline. No Melon, No Lemon coming in for Rupee here on the side of Summit High School. And Toxic Mo actually getting their first play time today. So both teams uh, using a sub here for their final match. Yeah, and uh, I don't think it will disrupt too much, but I, I can't stress how important it is that you get across the line in that first seed because then you have zero risk at all of playing a number one seed from a different group. Like Huntington High School, I think that would be the team I would fear the most. I, I had them on broadcast yesterday and they were absolutely immense. And the way they held themselves outside of game as well was absolutely terrific. So it's about finishing and closing this out if you are Summit High School. We'll see Crudex temporarily hit this one out. Jonesy, open shot, but not able to put that one on target. Bromsby on the follow will force a save out of Crudex, who will rotate back just a bit, play another defensive role as getting that touch. Toxic Mo will bump his own teammate. That certainly is toxic and will then rotate out. But ultimately, defense is holding. First minute gone and Summit High School. A couple shots, but for right now, VTHS uh, is able to put the ball down and actually able to maybe ramp into something as Redex is forcing No Melon into a tough clear, but the super sub here is able to get that clear out. VTHS. Vikings are actually going quite well right now. They're holding strong defensively. Codex has made a lot of good saves, a lot of good clearances. And uh, I don't think they really, you know, look like they're going to score a goal, but they, they, they've, they've looked better. Toxic Mo will try their own hand, but they overthought that one. Doesn't get the contact they're looking for. Showtime will put that one onto the sidewall. Jonesy, high lob, no melon. They're looking for it. They do get the shot off and they will tuck it into the bottom left. So that is the opener there in game number one by Summit High School. I think it is our lemon for that goal. Would you, would you eat a lemon? I, I don't really think you would, would you? Uh, deserves a melon for that goal. <laughs> Ocean, you, you mean you don't just eat lemons like a hand food? Like pick it up like an apple, just take a big old bite? You don't, you don't oh, feed no. yourself that way? No, not really. But I do, do, I do that with onions, and people do criticize that. I actually do, like, eat an onion on its own. I'm going to drop this conversation immediately because I just gagged a little bit in my casting booth. But <laughs> we will be touching on that potentially after the series. Right now, we're focused on Crudex and Vernon trying to get back in this. They're falling behind, but actually, there's a fair amount of chances that they've hit off the backboard and be able to get across this Toxic Mo. Fortunately, no touch there. Crudex called into action. Jonesy will flick. Bromsby will be able to get to that to the back post and actually will be able to put that one in. So 2-0 right before half time. See, Summit go for their pace, just warm up a little bit. And they're starting to get a couple more chances created, but I still have to give credit to uh, the VTHS Vikings. Yeah, I'm giving credit to the Team 2-0 going, but I was expecting an absolute massacre here. I was expecting it to be maybe 10, 11, 10, 11 nil, but it's been all right. The fancy has been pushed on. It's good to see that they're uh, able to uh, both teams summon in a player, but allowing everyone to get uh, play time because I think Summit, I mean, it speaks to their confidence. I don't think he would do that knowing that this is going to be a knockout drag out brawl here. So seeing them at least advance up and force Crudex and company into interesting position and uh, Vernon Township doing the same, getting in another player. At least uh, understanding that they're getting everyone a spotlight here on the national championships and at least for right now they're they're playing pretty well seamlessly uh both teams actually playing a good job with the new thirds fortunately the touch here though from crudex not going to be enough and uh summit will put in number three crudex is a player i do want to highlight i mean i know they've just made a six so this is really poor timing from me but 
they've been suppressive today, right? You know, that they've made a couple of clearances every single time, you know, they've created a chance. It has been something to do with Phoenix. So that is still a player to look out for. Like this this VTHS team, yes, they've been forward today, and yes, they've been punching back at the group, but they've been all day. Uh, they they certainly uh, some things to highlight. We we'll see Jonesy will just tuck one in on the kind of honestly, I would argue that maybe we do just a clear, just trying to tap that one forward, but unfortunately it's gonna find its way in, and it will be number four. Though it's certainly a uh, Crudex. I mean, they they were the player actually that was highlighted for this team within the EGF High School All Star match over this past weekend, and they showed up and were playing very solidly for their team. So uh, certainly Vernon Township having to nominate one of those players uh, chooses Crudex, understanding that. They are uh, somewhat of a backbone of this team. They've been all over the field, getting some good touches, getting the goals uh, for their side. So uh, certainly a good player to highlight. And unfortunately, even though the national championship run will end here, uh, it's good to know that uh, your school recognizes what you do and will like to applaud you for it. And uh, at this point, I'm just hoping for them to get a couple goals, get some uh, time in the spotlight down the stretch as they're trying to force in a goal here with a couple of demos, but unfortunately not able to get that final flick. Touch on that. This, this is such a nice event to have, right? We we didn't. I, I I'm not. I'm not sure if you're older or whatever. But we we never had these events when I was at school, where you would be able to do, go to national championships with your high school. This is awesome, and it just speaks volumes of how far esports is coming and how these players are able to grow their personalities and mature as people while playing in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, play, games like this are also a chance to really speak up to, and of course, as you said, like as I was growing up as well, I think, you know, I think we're both, you know, 20s-ish. <laughs> we, we're, uh, I mean, uh, just to the point where you have people coming through and having esports scholarships within college. I mean, this is a great opportunity for players to stand out, for scouts to come to these uh, streams and be able to watch as players Ooh. pop off as Cortex actually get a crazy save there. But uh, being able to really have a national stage here to display yourself, show off your skill, and maybe get some money, go to college, and help pay off some of those um, school loans. Fortunately uh, for Crudex, even though they have a shine bright throughout this game, their team will be dropping game number one, Summit High School taking the lead in this series in the final match, trying to close things out, and like we had mentioned, advance on as the number one seed from Group 5. And, and this is what we expect from the Summit High School, a nice controlled performance. It's not going to be where we saw Richardson, they were going for those results or whatever. Summit High School, it's just going to be a nice controlled performance. They'll create the chances as they come. And that's just how Summit will fight all day against every single team. I mean, they struggled game one against Lubbock High School. But as soon as they got a game plan in that matchup, I, I was almost certain they were going to win despite the fact we went to a game five in that series because they were just putting on to the side and they just looked so in control. I really like this Summit High School roster. And I'm glad they won't have to play a team like Huntington in the next round. I feel like those are the two teams I'll have my eyes on over the next couple of days in, in the Rocket League for the national championships. But yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this Summit team get on in the future. Yeah, and, and being these uh, is the last day of group stage, we had games yesterday and also today to decide these top two teams from all the groups who is going to be advancing on in the bracket that will be happening on Saturday. It is uh, interesting to see these teams kind of preview down the stretch because, of course, when they're only playing the teams within their groups, you have to, to have teams that aren't going to qualify, um, are going to qualify, and then teams that uh, unfortunately are. But it's interesting to play those mental matchups. See, when you do have a team, as you mentioned, like with Huntington, that you have experience with, or Sheehan Titans, who uh, won nationals last year for EGF, how those teams are going to match up. And I think Summit is uh, showing that they certainly have it in them to go far. It's just a matter of uh, trying to perfect that group stage run here, going for um, another win here. And uh, even uh, getting in the subs, they haven't really missed a step. No Melon, No Lemon is actually playing just fine in this backfield, getting good saves, getting good touches upfield. And uh, yeah, they certainly have a bright future ahead, not just, uh, I'm sure, as players down the stretch, but even just for this next week. I like about No Melon, No Lemon. As they've come into the lineup, they haven't had to make any drastic play style changes or whatever. It's still setting the, setting the ball up on the side, making little passing plays. It's still business as usual, right? It's almost as if there was no player change at all. It's, it's not easy to do, especially since you are not playing all those games. What a pinch all the way down. Grunex <laughs> get, get that. No Melon, No Lemon. What a goal. Wow. <laughs> oh 
goodness. And that was intended too. That, that wasn't like a Zeth by Magic Lock. That was an intended pitch and it was perfect. That was actually incredible. I can't believe that they actually brought that together. Maybe even calmed that to each other. Like, hey, come here, I want to try something. But a uh, fantastic job there. And, uh, what a stylish way to get our opening goal here. Right at the uh, first minute having elapsed. We'll see now if uh, maybe something else can happen here, but it's a little more elementary. Problems we go down the middle. Unfortunately, not going to work out. Jonesy there for the tap-in, though. Yeah. Well, we're a little bit slower paced from Summit here, you know. They are the better team. You would maybe expect more goals, but it's, it's controlled. It's a controlled performance. I'm not concerned in any means. I don't really think this is going to matter. They're going to get a good night's sleep after this. They're going to come into the, to the bracket. They've got another day's rest as well. So they'll have plenty of time to set up and get ready for the next game. I wouldn't even matter for the rest. I wouldn't even care for the rest of the series. If I were them, I would just play Rocket League, have a good time, make sure everyone's ready to go. It's a nice time to be a summit player. It is, and uh, they're just trying to have fun with each other, trying to go off the backboard and just uh, get what comes from them as they get a little tap down. I know uh, one player that is a very interesting player and uh, definitely a very uh, interesting approach to it is a player like Wall Python within She and Titans, uh, the team that had won nationals last season. They have a pattern that no matter the stakes of the game, game one, they will always use the Scarab car <laughs> as, their, as their car body. And then oh, as the series goes on, they might change, but they will always start a series like that. I'm interested to see if they'll keep that up, but I'm also interested to see if maybe it's going to be all business from Summit or if they're going to try to experiment. If they're going to go to a weird car, they're going to, I don't know, play keyboard mouse, <laughs> just really go all out and just try to be very straight, uh, be very strange, have some fun with these final games because they, they have gotten through. And yes, there are still stakes to this, so you can't completely let your guard down. You can't just uh, completely stop playing. But it is um, nice to see them uh, flowing through this game, getting the goals that they need and being able to kind of cruise their way to the win. I did talk to the group yesterday, right? So that so some will avoid playing them as well as Huntington High School, two of the favorites for this national championship. So some with that in mind, still have a really good chance to go far. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see the depth of the national championship really coming through because uh, we talk a lot about Sheehan and Huntington, but uh, Richardson, I mean, even though they did falter against the Summit last series in a nice 3-0, that also was a Richardson without one of their players. Uh, he was really someone who had stepped up very well. They were playing very cohesively and they were very fast to the ball. High skill player. Once they're back in action, they can clear their schedule a bit. Taps over the weekend for the quarters, semis, and grand finals, potentially. I'm very curious to see what Richardson can do. It's just the top two teams out of all these groups. Uh, there really is uh, no chaff, really. All that has been cut out and it's going to be very elite teams uh, throughout. So this weekend is shaping up to be quite something as uh, Summit is trying to show off that uh, dominance by continuing to push forward here, but at least now there's a bit of a lull in the goal scoring. Yeah, a break here. It's still firmly in control of the Summit roster, but I like, I like the fact that she chills on. It's a night and I relaxed conversation about, you know, how, how the rest of the, the event is going to go. And I'm actually really excited to see um, how the second player seems to favor. I think uh, Summit, you know, they, they fully put themselves into the, the conversation and maybe a top four finish that possible for them. Um, but the second place seems like Richardson. That's going to be extremely interesting because, yeah, they missed a player for that summer game. I don't think it really made a difference if, you know, series defining, but they certainly would have got the game 100%. They would have, it would have been a lot closer and maybe they could have upset Summit, right? Um, but I would like to see how far Richardson go because they were impressive and definitely didn't lack any identity. Yeah, and as we see, actually, Bromsby almost own goaling one to the top corner as uh, we'll, we'll have to see Vern Township search a different way to get their goal. But um, on the counter attack, no melon, no lemon, hops the pass and said, Fredex cuts that one out. 100% uh, agreed, though. Uh, sorry, Bromsby caught me by surprise that he's going to let that one fly through. So Fredex at least gets his team on the board. To score a goal in every series today, I mean, that went outside like much, but. Considering that the DTHS Vikings have struggled, yeah, you know, they have struggled all day. They have been the sort of punching bag for products individually to get those goals. It's been nice. Yeah, it certainly has, and uh, we'll see if maybe they can uh, get a little stat padding for the road, get some uh, goals on the board, just to, you know, 
clip sent home mom and pop, but they're unfortunately going to have to deal with the, some defensive issues as well. Bromsby going to get on the ball, and I think the slow changeup of this got a baited defense in is uh, I don't think even Bromsby expected to hit that ball with a, as little pace there, but it's a good way to top off with 5-1 with 36 to go. So Brazil potentially on the table. Go for it. I mean, the, the series is under control. The game is under control. They might as well for, for a few, few cars forward, try, try and get a couple of calls. I mean, I don't like to see teams just demolish each other, and I would like to see them just try and control the passing of the game while they're up by four or so goals, but it would be nice for someone to get a Brazil. And at least uh, a lot of time being wasted off, so I don't know if they'll have the true time to be able to get this, but one more roller up the backboard, Toxic Mo and Crudex both committing to this one. Bromsby gets the double tap, and it's the hope is still alive with four seconds to go. Very nice double tap as well. Saving one of the best goals for last one, two, goal. Actually, really beautiful touch. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't mean to have my reaction undersell that, the mechanical skill on display here, um, but really just a, a cherry on top of an already fantastic Sunday of a game here from Summit High School. Top to bottom finish, get and it. right at zero seconds, they're gonna get robbed. Robsby's gonna keep it alive for a little bit, but unfortunately, Crudex gonna get a long clear down, and unfortunately, I think that will be the end of it, but wait, hold on. Robsby's up for it, but they can't keep the play alive. No Brazil, but a clean win nonetheless. Summit High School takes game two, 6-1. The Codex had the right, I mean, if probably not for their own pride, that would be the third time they'd been in Brazil today, so Codex had to get in there, otherwise, yeah, that would be a bit of an embarrassing start. And I, I do like the uh, interesting mix of games. Out of all the things, actually, Summit High School is getting some interesting goals. We have the double tap from Bronzy, which is just straight skill. But then he was also the person who assisted No Melon on the cross map pinch to open the scoring. So kind of fitting that they get two bookend goals there, both very stylish uh, and impressive to really start and end the game. It's a uh, somewhat poetic there. And at this point, they just have to close the series out. We got one more game to go, uh, both um, for this game and then also for the broadcast. But uh, Summit High School, it definitely uh, vibing right now. It's a good to see that they're not letting it down. They're they're having fun with it still. They're putting in the subs. And I think they can feel fairly confident about their performance all throughout today. I think this is a great showing for them. Um, I think uh, it's also the best, uh, I would say, pattern of play you can hope for, where you have uh, maybe an issue with maybe uh, at the start, you don't have a player actually truly come through. Um, and speaking of, uh, I believe Showtime for Burn Township is uh, not quite joined the team yet, because I think they might have stepped away or might have had some connection issue, but they are in now, so we are able to properly enjoy this. But as I mentioned uh, for what I was getting at, yammering on and on about, is Summit High School able to uh, start the game off with kind of a shaky, you know, game five victory, and then they get the 3-0, and now they might be able to get another one. But they're gonna have to get past Cortex to see he almost able to uh, bring that all the way down, but the save and crossfield uh, clear will ultimately go in. So yes, no melon, no lemon, will turn things to order, 1-0 Summit. Yeah, Summit, they, they seem to be enjoying themselves right now, and that, that's good, right? It's, it's good signs for a team to see them enjoying themselves when they are in such a comfortable position. If you see a team, you know, kind of going for those those desperation, seven, seven ones or 10 nil victories, right? I think you kind of sense something's off. You know, they have something to prove. Some are just vibing, right? They got two balls each the last game. They were sharing it around. They're just having fun. Yeah, they get another roller, but Jones gonna have to try a little bit better than that. Bromsby off the backboard will set up no melon. They also put that on target and does very well. So I think this really speaks to uh, Summit. This is actually only one of uh, one of uh, several teams actually this high school has churned out. So. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're putting in uh, really the water out in the Summit High School School District, but that whole high school really just rife with Rocket League talent. Uh, if they win this game, actually, I believe they're going to be the second Summit team to actually come out on top in their group play for the EGF National Championship. I think this is kind of a trend. I don't want to as well. also put like a lot into their esports program. I think they had a lot of teams qualify for this event. 
I feel like the teams who have put the, or the school, sorry, uh, who have put the most into their esports programs are benefiting a lot in these national championships. I don't know if you, you've noticed the same trend, but I think the same is, you know, for a collegiate, um, at a higher level university wise. It, whoever puts the most in gets the most back out of it. I feel like a lot of people need to realize the potential of esports. Oh my goodness, what a robbery by both posts and the bar uh, and going out, but not that someone needed the goal, but of course, you know, a little bit of interesting luck there from VTHS. I will agree that the the programs, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we had uh, touched on briefly in-game, that the esports programs throughout the U.S. are growing in high school is one of the many emerging aspects of esports, same with collegiate as that's getting more notoriety, but the collegiate aspect, absolutely. The, the programs that put in money that have dedicated people who their whole job is to be the university coach or the esports administrator, um, those are the teams that consistently qualify. They're the ones who attract quality players. And while you can't necessarily do that with a high school, you can't necessarily recruit many teams unless you're going to a private school, it is interesting to see that just the training and the structure and the commitment from the staff and coaches is able to produce that much of a difference. You'll see teams like Huntington and Summit be able to produce multiple quality teams that are going to go deep and potentially, based on the structure of the bracket, they might face off against each other for the Nationals, which is a very interesting uh, come up, comeuppance if that does uh, come to fruition. And the way that Summit's playing right now, I mean, I wouldn't count it out. And what I, what I actually like, like this is, you know, I was saying I didn't read it we probably didn't have this when we were in, in high schools. This gives ch uh, players and people a chance to express themselves on a national stage. This is a national stage, right, that people can express themselves on. Some of this has been on ESPN3. That is, that is a magical thing to experience as, as someone growing up. These players are maturing as they are playing the, the, these video games. And I think that's a lovely experience to have. Certainly so. They'll carry the skill with them and hopefully they're having fun along the way as Summit was open up a four goal lead, eight goals in total. So enjoying a nice cruise through here in a number three with two minutes to go. So uh, the Summit High School team, I'm curious to see and uh, we'll try to pick their brains uh, potentially after this for the interview, but they, they had a very interesting start to the day and it's gotten really smoother as they've gone along and I love to see the warm up and I think uh, I'm curious to see what their strategy, or really, I guess, what the plan is going forward, because as Nationals approaches, they are going to have to play at their absolute peak. They can't really afford to have kind of a slower start like they had against Lubbock, where it was a bit more of a struggle. I think if they play like they did in game number two, especially, they can take it the distance. But uh, I think we've also seen plenty of evidence in the past two days uh, from both you and I in our group respective group stages that you see when teams have a slow start, they can get punished and we're slowly uh, really whittling down the time until we reach the point in this tournament where that's just not going to be enough. Uh, I feel like, you know, they are going to play a second place in the next round, so that might be like another one. But once we get to top eight, once we get to top eight, that's that's when this gets interesting. Top eight and uh, yeah, no, top eight, top, top four, that's where it's going to get exciting. It's going to be teams of different qualities. They're going to have different identities. And that is when we're going to see the, these players shine, right? Who has the personality to go win? Who's the leader? Who has fierce determination? That sort of thing is going to be critical on the last couple of things. And it were uh, reaching the final stretches here of game number three, Summit High School with their 5-0 lead, it will be able to take game number three. And of course, they say that almost at in a six, but Credex able to get that clear out. And with this 3-0 lead, of course, going through that next round, I am really curious to see if, and as I say that, the potential has increased if we will see a Brazil. Last game, they got robbed, but with 30 seconds remaining, the dream is alive. It you know, you have to concede, and I, I don't know if this team is in the mood for conceding. <laughs> that is a good point. I mean, it, it is, I have to put the ego aside, and there's actually a shot, but Kronex is not going to allow that one to go. I think they realize what's at stake here, as they'll put that one down. You know, Melon curving around this one, Showtime, has a roller, Brahms with a demo, and I think you're right, I don't think uh, we're actually going to see that uh, do come to fruition, as I don't believe they have enough time here. They're going to at least try here as Jonesy and Bromsby collecting themselves in the midfield. No Melon. 
High lob. One more shot off. Gonna be a little wide. Jonesy can't sit in, but unfortunately, no more time off the clock. Fitting to end it with seven. Not the one, but they will be taking the win in Summit High School. Sweeping their way through the groups. Uh, not a clean sweep, but three wins on the board will put them at number one in their group. And we'll be looking forward to seeing them in this weekend's bracket. Yeah, no, some impressed me today. I feel like they had a pretty strong identity. They, you know, their team play was really good. It was really, really good. And, you know, that that's something that they can't be understood. These, these are high school players, right? They got a long esports future ahead of them if they decide to pursue that. Or if they just want to do it as a hobby now. When they're doing it now, they're performing, they're having fun, they're making team plays. And those are skills that aren't just going to be awesome for esports or Rocket League skills you know they, they go forward they help you in workplace environments and, and so on and so forth yeah and it's a good thing to see i mean both off off camera really between games we've been remarking how well spoken all these students are they're speaking very fluidly and it's an impressive thing to see and the gameplay is really suitable for that and uh, a commensurate amount of skill to go uh, on the pitch and off the pitch. So hopefully we'll be able to pick one of the brains of the Summit High School players there. They are going to push through and we'll throw you guys to a brief break. Um, but thank you for watching all the matches. We'll see if we can get a Summit High School player. But we'll be right back with a, the final moments of our group stage play here for the 2021 EGF High School National Championships. Fire in my head got me on edge. I'm going out tonight. Fade it on a thread. Don't know what's next. I wanna feel alive. I kissed a stranger in a white dress. She put a crown on top of my head. Said every king needs a queen in his bed. I said, hey, girl, hey, girl, I'd like to stay. Here for a while, just you and I Far from the places we can't get away from She said, hey, boy, hey, boy, I like your style I'll let you play me for a while Play me till the sun rises Play me like a violin Welcome back, everyone, to the last segment here for the last day of group stage play here for the 2021 EGF High School National Championships. Group five is up six games up and six games down. Who's coming out when the dust clears is Summit High School, your number one seed, followed behind by Richardson. We have Bromsby, one of the members of the Hilltop Gamers here. I guess technically I shouldn't call you that because a separate Summit High School team is also in the final bracket there. Both of you guys qualifying, but I'm going to go to you since you are the member of the current team. How are you feeling after uh, getting through that qualification with a clean 3-0? Uh, it feels good. Uh, we knew there was going to be some challenging teams, and it's really 
really good that we pulled out all those wins. And I'm excited for the knockout stage. Nice. And all right. So I'm going to ask you about your second game of the day. I know it's a bit weird to, to kind of you know bring your mind back, but I think it's better now that we get to pick your juices about the entire group stage. Talk to you about the second game against Richardson. They were 2 0. They were playing really aggressively and, and were honestly, you know, making a start who would win that second game. Few gamers in that series came alive and looked excellent. Talk to me about how you were prepared. Well, not, maybe not preparing, but how you were adapting in game. Uh, talk to me about the moments in that matchup. I think that second match, we'd really like, we'd gotten past all the nerves. We were ready to just like give it our best game. And I think we really came in prepared for what uh, they had in store. I watched some of their games earlier. We kind of got the sense that they were very consistent with what they did, but they didn't necessarily make plays out of nowhere so if we played solid defense we didn't give them a lot of chances and we played good offense consistent offense then we'd be able to beat them so we just tried to limit the chances they had and that seemed to work pretty well and we uh after seeing you they did work out well clearly you got your 3-0 and then you're able to finish out with another 3-0 so you're through you're the first seed which means you'll be playing the second seed for your first round uh later on in the uh, bracket this weekend however to pick your brain about that now today's over you can go get some food relax watch some tape play with your friends but i'm curious to th uh see that we interviewed you earlier in the day after your first win and you had talked about you're confident you think you can hang with these teams is there any team though that you have an eye out for maybe you've played them before and it's kind of a grudge match or is it anything that you're a bit i don't want to say worried because i think you guys are plenty confident but is there any team that you have your eye out for that you really have to uh watch out for uh, later on in the bracket I think uh, the other team from Summit High School might be the biggest threat. Uh, we played them, like, at the beginning of the season, like, February or something. We played them just, like, get a sense of where we were at. And they, they beat us pretty well. It wasn't particularly close. But, like, we stayed in the game. It was competitive. Mm -hmm. But they, they were soundly beating us. But we've improved a lot since then. So, I don't know. Maybe we take revenge. And also, Stallions was another very good team that we faced earlier on in the season. Um, and we kept it very close, but we couldn't quite pull it out. We're hoping maybe now we've improved a lot since then. We can maybe beat them if we face them. Uh, other than that, I'm not sure if I have any other teams in mind. All right. So final question, right? So we, we've talked about the future. We talked about the Richardson game. I don't want to talk to, to you about the experience of being in this national tournament, right? You played three games, all stream on a national event, a national esports stage. How, how does that make you feel? And talk to me about this, what this tournament has done for you personally. Uh, it's kind of a crazy feeling. Like, I never really would have thought, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago that I'd be playing video games at any kind of, like, prof uh, like competitive level at all. Um so just being in any competitive setting is really exciting because you have this drive to improve and to exceed expectations. And then when you do, it feels great. So it's felt great overall because when we started the season, we definitely didn't expect to get to nationals, but here we are anyway. Certainly here you are and you're clear through group stage. You'll be going to the bracket. Uh, thank you so much for sitting down with us again, Bromsby. We already asked you, you want to thank, but uh, do you have anyone else you want to add on? Maybe you forgot your mom sent you a text, like, can't believe you didn't thank me for that. But um, anyone else you want to thank before we let you go with the rest of your day? I'll thank my mom too. Also, shout out to <laughs> um, Alex, Nick, uh, anybody else who's watching, any of my friends. Uh, great support overall. And that's it. All right. Fantastic here. Bromsby, thanks so much for sitting down with us and best of luck this weekend. Thank you so much. And with that, everybody, it has been a pleasure to bring you all this action. Uh, I, myself, Dan Taco, and Ocean alongside me has been a wonderful casting partner. So we will be throwing you guys to a break, potentially raiding another stream. However, 
Uh, this has been the final day of the group stages for the 2021 EGF High School National Championships. Please tune in this weekend for further group stage play. But even tomorrow on EGF, other esports available, Overwatch and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate still doing their national championships alongside Rocket League. Plenty of action this week. Follow EGF on the socials. Follow both of your casters here. Follow the high schools. They all have esports Twitter. So really just everyone show them some love. And uh, Ocean, thanks for being my partner along for this journey. It's been an awesome ride. All right, see, I'll see you guys later and tune in next time for some more national championships. Black heart, the black soul, underneath this black, black sky.